Yo, what's up? It's Nikki D, Daddy's Little Girl. You already know what it is, and I'm always with all hip hop. Stop playing with us. Let's go, everybody. It's your man Chuck Creekmer, aka Jigsaw, here at One World Studios with my man yes. DJ Thorough. Yes. And we're here with none other than a legend, Ooh. first lady, the first of, lady Def Jam, of Def Jam, and outspoken Ooh. advocate for hip hop right now. Hungry. You like that? Hey. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. But. Let's just, we're not going to play with it. We're going to get right <laughs> into it. We're going to get right into it. They have you no warm-up. You recently warm made headlines, and you got everybody's attention, including my whole team. We were all passing this this um, messaging that you had across the prostitution era of hip-hop. Online prostitution. All because of a performance by Ice Spice, mm -hmm. which got everybody talking, including yourself. Mm -hmm. So let me just, I want to um, quickly paint the picture for folks, because at some point, this will be an old headline. Right. So Ice Spice came out Halloween weekend, powerhouse Philly, in a red dress, very tight, T -shirt. as mm -hmm. Betty Boop, right? Mm -hmm. She was dressed as <laughs> Betty Boop, and it just... It really just didn't fit. She kind of kept pulling it down. She was very uncomfortable looking. It, she did. She definitely yeah. looked uncomfortable, and she was actually performing my favorite song from her, which is Delhi. That's Deli, actually Delhi goes that's, hard. Yeah, Delhi goes so hard. So I didn't even expect that because Delhi right. goes hard. But it wasn't her best performance. I don't know if it was the venue or the city, or just her having an off night. But it definitely wasn't really her best performance. You mm -hmm. know. Um, and so now, you say. Gen Z or mm -hmm. millennial, I don't know which Gen Z one. is that, Gen Z that generation, yeah. Is now coming for you. Um, what are they saying? Well, first thing they say is, and I always like to preface my own self with this when y'all come for me. I know I'm old. Go ahead. I know mm -hmm. I had one big record. And I can't find anything else. Go ahead. I know they don't do it the way you used to do it anymore. Go ahead. I know all that. Mm -hmm. So, again, I just go back to y'all get butt hurt. Y'all don't know how to really take a punch or criticism it's always like and not for nothing these artists don't even know who you are i'm a fan too of many people but if somebody does something that i don't approve of then i pull back and be like yeah that was just dead wrong i'm not gonna side with them because i love their music like right. we have to get outside of artists versus you know reality yeah you know what i mean i think that's kind of where we are so when they come for me they come with all of the you know you oh like i put a little story up yesterday on my instagram page and i was like they coming for me are they like first of all bitch you oh and I, I, I giggle on myself all the time. I don't really care about it. But I tell you what, you would be so lucky to get the age that I am. And you would be so lucky to get royalty checks that I got just two weeks ago in the mail 30 years later mm -hmm. from that one song. Right. You would be so lucky to see all those things years later. You feel me? Because mm -hmm. what I did was timeless. I didn't do trendy. Mm -hmm. I did classic. And I am absolutely going to say that. You know what I mean? Nobody mm -hmm. has to tell me that. I know I did that. Yeah. Right. So... I think the um, problem is, too, um, a lot of artists that try to bash and, and start with the ageism, they don't do history. So historically speaking, when you were out, that was going on, but it wasn't celebrated to the forefront how it is now. Mm -hmm. So you had groups, a lot of people don't know, EZ put a group out called, while they had H -W -A. NWA, there was HWA, H -W -A. Holes with Attitudes. Mm -hmm. On Rap A Lot, there was a rapper called Choice. Mm -hmm. She rapped exactly how they're rapping now. Mm -hmm. Again, it wasn't celebrated. Mm -hmm. It was out. Mm -hmm. Mercedes, Master P had an artist called Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at the album cover, guess what she's doing? Mm -hmm. Ass bent out, mm -hmm. coochie mm -hmm. print showing. Mm -hmm. This music has been there since, mm -hmm. since the beginning. And, and the other side of it is right. that there was just a healthy balance it, of that's different what I'm stuff. Going. There was a balance. Yeah. There was, see, that's the problem. So you take this generation now. What's the what's the what's the uh what's the balance of of that? What's the where's the where's well, the Lauryn Hills? Here's, here's, where's the MC Lights? Here's the thing: when you talk about that history, right? Right. It was inappropriate, even though it was happening. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Hence, hence the reason why it never hit the forefront. It was made, but you don't. They weren't major acts. Everybody you name was just another. Group exactly. Because right. it wasn't anything we as a people or we as a culture was celebrating. We right. didn't. We wasn't mad that it was there because we don't think everybody is a the nun, and we don't think everybody is the church girl. We don't think right. everybody all prim and proper. No, we all. Gully, we all, please, come on, we all smoke, we all drink, we all have fun, right. we all have wild parties. That's not even it. Right. But when you have a outlet um, such so as, such as such as the size of hip hop, and you have a media space to really put something out there in, put something out there that is going to be 
you know, the legacy. Like, put something out there that's going to actually push something off to your people. Right. Now, we didn't have the... That was just something that, at the end of the day, you wasn't going to be on a big stage with that unless those big dogs brought you out because you right. wasn't going to sell records. You, right. you couldn't play nowhere. Like, that was the whole thing about becoming a commercial, if you will, artist, a mainstream artist. Right. You had to be mainstream. Right. Now, it's mainstream because, for me... It's the manufactured black woman. That's mm. how I see it. Mm. I was going there. I'm glad you. Talk. That's how I right. see it. Who's responsible for putting this content out? That's what we have to look at. I think that well, too. Absolutely. 100%. Because you're being rewarded. It's, if it's not rewarded, they won't do it. Absolutely. Mm. A thousand percent. So if I'm paying you to be this person, you're going to be this person. And nobody's ever going to look at you like this. So programming is everything. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand that that's what marketing is. Sure. I'm going to program you to like this image right here. I'm gonna program you to be this person. Mm -hmm. How many videos do you see online every day where girls are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old turning around shaking their ass? Because this is what they see regardless, even if their mother's at work. Mm -hmm. Somewhere this image has entered their, 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 mm -hmm. their face. Right. And it's so much of it that now this is all we see. Mm -hmm. So when we have this idea of what the black woman is today, we just look at the images we see. Now, do we need to see Michelle Obama? No. Do we need to see Sister Soldier all the time? No. Do we need to see the super righteous? No, but we need balance. We need balance, and we, we don't have it. We need to have a Lauren Hill. We need to have a Queen Latifah. We need to have a Nikki D. We need to have an MC Light. Look at Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. Where's Rhapsody at? They he just dropped a new song, Asteroids. And I hope this thing does something for yeah. us because you know why? They don't put the gas on. Yeah, we talking about like one. That. It's disproportionately. We talking I know. about one. No, but I'm just saying. Yeah. I just want to shout her out. So why is she not in the whole? That's my Look point. At, okay, so let's talk about Lady London. Where's she at? Right. Let's Next. talk about all these other young rappers that are dope that are not out there. Where they right. at? They out there. I'll do you one even better. Let's look at, we all know, I'm a man. I love women. I love women, right? Uh -huh. So we all know white women twerk, Asian mm -hmm. women twerk, mm -hmm. Jewish women twerk. Mm -hmm. they, they rap too. Why are they not putting them out? Because they're not our culture. Let's keep it a whole buck. We're getting exploited. Let's keep it a whole buck. Right, block. exactly. That's not our culture. You you get in where you fit in, right? Let's take Eminem. Eminem just came up, stood up, shined up, and mm -hmm. did it, and created a base and a market share for himself that was undeniable. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's he dope. A, and he was a thousand percent solid at what he did. Dope. Am I an Eminem fan? No. Do right. I like Eminem? Yes. Okay. And people will tell, how you don't like Eminem? Because it's just not what I like. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You yeah. know what I mean? But he created his space. And right now, I just read today that he is the top-selling rap artist in the 21st century. Right. And you got all of this fuckery out there. Right. Mm -hmm. And our goal should be is to make these legacy marks, these milestones. Right. We're not on it like that. So let's talk about the other side, right? Okay. Poli let's talk policing women's bodies and, okay. and minding our own business. Okay. And, you know, a lot of women say, you know, we're free. We're liberated. We're able to express ourselves in these ways when you were not in your day or even further back um, by whereas men perhaps have been free to do these things like say DMX I don't know mm -hmm. 50 cent I mean you know they always had their shirt off you know they ain't got to. and they were selling they were selling <laughs> they were believe it or not they were selling sex yes. too mm -hmm. right and I did I never took it as such but other communities did, like even the gay community, for example. And I'm not trying to be funny, but that was like a talk at one point, particularly around 50, and I'm not, again, trying to be right. funny. No. Mm -hmm. But there was this notion that he's selling sex, and women is an obvious one, right? But mm -hmm. period. Um, so it's always been for sale. Yeah. So what do you what, what's your view on that side of things, where women are free now, they can... You know, for example, Megan is a college grad, which, whatever that means, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to anybody. You know, that's respectability politics. I'm not sure yeah. why that's in, <laughs> in the mix, but it is in right. the mix to offset, you know, what the other thing. The right. Other thing. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Because I saw I, it's crazy. I remember her literally saying that her grandmama and her was studying for her, or somebody in her family was taking a test. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to walk the stage, you walk the stage. Right. Fine. However you got it, you got it. Great. But as far as policing women's bodies, right? I feel like women, and this is and this is a thing where I'm fine with the double standard, mm -hmm. that women should still remain some sort of mystery. Women should still remain women in a sense that you're not completely exposing yourself to the world because you also have children. You also have a man. You also have family. You also have a mother, a father, a sister, somebody who has to go to school and listen to this or somebody has to go to work and hear about this because while it's okay to be liberated and be free and do what you want to do, just know that it's going to come with some stuff. Mm -hmm. And just know that at some point, you're going to have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be this 
role model, this image they say that you are, mm -hmm. but you are, and even if you don't like it, you are. Mm -hmm. But you just have to be able to answer the questions and be responsible. And you can't just be like, oh, because I like shaking my ass. That's what? So what? Right. It's such a corny, irresponsible answer. Yeah. It just doesn't even register with me like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now, you know, you're going to have the people go, oh, again, but you just, oh, we don't do it like that no more. You did it at a... Yeah, but you might as well just get an OnlyFans and call it a day because you're really going to get your bag there. Right. Just That's get an OnlyFans. Call it a day. Yeah. Because now we're talking, we're not talking rap music no more. Yeah. Because, I mean, please, can somebody tell me? Give me give me one verse. I can't. Give it's all on prostitution. You, I can't give you no verse. That's you the can't. problem. Cause they, they, you they, can't. I can't. Because you don't know the lyrics. Mm. You can't. You don't know what you're saying. It's all sex related. It's all sex related. Nobody's giving me a verse. It's like music for a porno soundtrack. That's how I give you a couple verses. From who? From who? Um, I like Delhi. No, and, Delhi okay. and Megan. Megan got a couple of joints I like. You know, like. Yeah, we're talking about two people. Two yeah, 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 yeah. Out, mean, of, out of an industry that's disproportionately and crazy. You, and here's the thing. I'm gonna, it, it just, so out of all of this, so let me just put this on the table. I like Cardi B. Yeah, Cardi. Now let me tell you why I like Cardi. Okay. First of all, the album Privacy, was it No Privacy, Privacy, something like that? Mm -hmm. I think it was so Inva well was it Invasion? Invasion of Privacy. Invasion of Privacy. Mm -hmm. I think it was so well produced. I think it was the most fluid record we had heard in a long time from an artist. Forget uh -huh. it being a female, from an artist. She uh -huh. had Chance the Rapper. She had Malik Youssef. She had these people helping and producing on uh -huh. it. She had Partisan Fontaine writing. She had a solid team that put this album together for her. And the one thing, one thing Cardi became when she stepped on the scene was a full-blown artist. Uh -huh. So I can give you Cardi verses. I can mm -hmm. give you, I can't give you other, because Cardi gives you so much emotion behind her stuff. Mm -hmm. She gives you so much energy behind her stuff. And at the same time, yeah, she's somewhat scissoring the chick. But that's her thing, too, at the end of the day. What'd you just say? You heard me. Um, <laughs> between, you know, but I'm talking about image-wise. When right. her and Meg did WAP, like, y'all ain't seeing it. It's there. I'm not making this up. Yeah. When yeah. they just did Bat, Bop, Boop, whatever that song was, <laughs> I don't, because that song I didn't care for too much. But I'm, I Bongos. Rock, bongos. But I yeah. rocks with Cardi. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I feel like she's a whole package and I watched her come up. But I don't from feel a... like she was totally machine made. Well, okay, go ahead. Hmm. I know where you're going. I don't feel like she was it. totally machine made because remember, she was I'm on the ground by herself. I love Cardi already too. pulling up on her I love own. her. I... Well, no, go. Uh, no. You want me to tell you go? Ahead. No, I like, I like, I like Cardi as well. But. Let, are we talking rap, hip hop? You know, she is so machine cool. made. She is machine made. She's machine pushed she, now. No, she's now, machine thing, made. I'm gonna tell you. Okay, so here's the thing. When Cardi was doing her own thing, and this is a little bit Cardi B history, okay. right? She was already mm -hmm. at a million followers on Instagram before she even got to love and hip hop. I get that. So she was already creating a base, right? She was already in the clubs doing her thing, right? And everybody right. knew who she was. Then Cardi also began to spend her own money putting herself in clubs, mm -hmm. going on the road, paying to be on these shows, paying to be seen and heard. Her own money. Mm -hmm. right. so she's already building that base, right. is what I'm saying. So then you get on Love & Hip Hop, and she says, you know what? And look, Love & Hip Hop. Nobody wanted to rock with her musically. Be but she backed off and said, you know what? I'm going to concentrate on my career. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly what she did. And the machine picked her up. And the machine lifted her up into and thrusted her into the industry. Yes, right. But I'm not gonna say she's completely driven by that. I'm saying when she got there, they gave it, her that boost. Right, like, right. let's be clear. Like, I, I can't say they put the building behind. They put the building behind, behind yeah. and they moved her. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. She has the support for. So the we machine. we have no That's problem with Cardi. I like yeah, Cardi. I like Cardi. Yeah, I like Cardi. I like Cardi. Um. Yeah, I like Cardi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I do. I guess I think I think what it is is. I think we're all searching. We know hip hop's potential. Yes. We know the power of hip hop, and so do they. Like they know probably more than we know, the power of our culture, and it just feels like it's been railroaded. I think we can all agree. Like absolutely. They like said, "Ooh, we gotta bump you out the seat, and let's go this way." Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like I think it's been washed. I, I agree with you, and I feel like, and a lot of people were saying this today, that. The art is gone, and there's no more artist development. Commercially. Well, there's for, right. separate the two. Right. Absolutely. Right. I agree with you on that. Right. Um, the art is gone commercially, right? Right. For the mass, for the big artists, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are tons of artists that you can go and see underground, what you right. call underground rap music, that are still selling. Like, look at Redman, who has done about 10 different, 12 different joints in the last, what, 10 days. Right. Look at Wu Tang and Nas. I still, I still want that. Muddy Waters too, Red Hello. Man, by the way. Yeah, Muddy Waters was crazy. Right. But he's killing a game like that. And, but 
it, it's not that we're not there no more. And I'm, again, I'm right. okay with that. We can right. have evolution. I'm okay with that. Right. I don't but think it's evolution though. Okay, when, I think it is. It's evolved to what it is evolved to. But evolution. is that is that ev- evolution or is that the evo- is like devolution? It, yeah, you can call it devolution, but it's devolution. The evolution of where yeah, it is. Evolution. Where it was. This is where it went. Is, are we evolution making progress? Is or, or are we digressing? Listen, feel- you can evolve into something bad, or you can evolve into what's something. The, what's good. evolving into something bad? So it's, true that. It's there bad. you go. That is the evolution of where we right. are, right? So then you have. For me, I don't think nobody sits down with these artists and go, "Okay, so what's your show gonna look like?" So when you get out there, they definitely okay, don't. Let's do go that. back to, to to spice just for a hot second. You did the whole Betty Boop thing. Let's put a show on. You got a bag. We know you got some coins. Let's take a couple of those dollars you made. Let's reinvest it. Let's go ahead and get some rehearsal going on. Let's get some dance going on. Let's look at Betty Boop. Let's come on, put the video on. What was Betty doing? Okay, we're gonna freak this. We're gonna flip this into this into that. And then you're gonna come out at this point. Yes, you can have the little Betty Boop dress on and be as risque as you want. But listen, but. Let's make it make You're doing sense. it yourself. You're coming from an artist perspective. But that's what You're I'm saying. You're not a real artist. No, but this is my point, though. It's artist development not. is not there anymore. Right. Yeah, no, it's point. not. It's not it's there. It's not at a real all. artist. It's not there. And I would all. love to see her win. And I'm going to say this just, just for any female rapper out there who would sit here and go, oh, we'll just leave us alone. Let me tell you something. I absolutely love you. You are me and I am you. Mm. There's absolutely no way I'm going to say um, what what is going on is cool mm-hmm. and it's not. You are so much better than that. You are solid queens. You are solid women in this game. You control the knob. You can do so much more with your career than what has been presented to you as a rap artist. Because now it's the business of rap music and now it's the business of entertainment. It's not even the business of rap music anymore. We're just entertaining people. Mm. And we have some music that we throw in there so that you can dance to it when you get on stage. You could do so much more. You could do so much more. So please... Anybody who wants to take this personal like I'm jabbing at you know, I'm telling you, as your big sister, your auntie, whatever you want to call me, I'm her OG. Yes, mm, right. I'm telling you, you could do more. You know, I, I like to speak from a point of credibility and experience. So me, myself, I personally DJ for 50 Cent, mm-hmm. Wu-Tang Clan, mm-hmm. just to name a few. Mm-hmm. And flexing. I'm flexing like, right now because I'm, flex. I'm, yeah. I'm making a point. <laughs> We've never done shows without rehearsing. Yes. Because we're artists. We care about the craft. We yes. want to put on a show. You can look at a lot of these artists now. There's there's nothing to rehearse for. You're just walking back and forth across the stage. There's no concept to the, for the performance. And that's the problem. They're not real and, artists. Let's not talk about the singing on the lyrics. Let's not talk yeah. about that. that too. That's, that's something. A, it's not a live show anymore. Yeah. What about um Sexy Red? <laughs> <laughs> Let me I mean, just say this. Well, Let me just say this, and I'm going to keep it all the way no, funky with Sexy Red. It. She said I'm a hoe. Is she that, said that's what she was. She didn't pretend. But it, she and it, listen, and this is the only reason why I'm just like, okay, you said you was, so what am what am I to expect? You said you was, mm-hmm. well, so what should I expect at this point? You feel me? Like it doesn't mean that you, I'm going to negate the fact that it still comes off as prostitution rap. I'm not going to negate that fact, mm-hmm. but you said that's what it was, and you gave it up that way. Mm-hmm. So nobody could ever say, well, she never said she was, you know, uh, she never said she was Nicki Minaj. She said she was sexy red, and my uh uh uh, and my uh uh is this. And that's what it is. I mean, later on, the video arises, and you know, people say that's not the truth. But hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, oh, you talk about the oh uh, yeah. Oh, I, I have scrubbed that from my mind. The Thank leak. you for bringing that back. But you, you know what they say: actions speak louder than words. A lot of rappers don't say they're hoes, but that's what they're doing. But it, the, you it, know what I mean, it actually didn't work for the City Girls when they dropped that oh, R A W project. It. It, how about that? And even, I think is we that might, the one that's out now? Yeah. Yeah, it did. I think we hit critical mass, honestly. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to tell you, I absolutely agree with you, Chuck. I feel like something different is going to happen. I'm not sure what that we influx is going to be. a youngster mm-hmm. to come up. But something is definitely going to happen. Something definitely different. But, you know, the machine, come on. Let's, let's just talk about how the machines are only machines and they only became machines, right? From Let's go back to Master P. Let's mm-hmm. go back to IC, mm. Crime Syndicate. Crime Syndicate. Independent. Yeah, yeah. Did it on his own, right? Worked with Zulu, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Then we got Ruthless Records, but he had a partner, mm-hmm. right? Jerry so Heller. Jerry was, Heller. Mm-hmm. That was still, we still coming from an independent space, but the partnership. Mm-hmm. Then you got um, Master P, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Independent, coming mm-hmm. through. Now, here come Cash Money. Here come Rockefeller. Here come this one. Here come that one. What does the label have to do? Nothing. I'm bringing you everything. That's true. Right. So your artist development department is dead. What? Mm. What's the A and R? No, we don't need to. No, we got our own budgets. Producers now, nah, we good. We know who we are gonna work with. 
Yeah. Photographers know we good. We got our own situation going on. So what does the label have to do now? It's like you don't work that muscle anymore. So if right. you don't work that muscle anymore, it gets weak. Mm. And all you know is what people are pushing in front of your door. Mm. Oh, did wait a minute, hold on. Did um baby say that was dope? Oh, then it ain't dope. Right. Did DMX say it was dope? Well, then it ain't dope. Did Jay Z and them co-sign it? Then it ain't co-sign. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and now you have somebody like a Dave East, right? Co-signed by Nas. We can co-sign you all day long, and I like Dave East. We co-sign you all day long, but now you got to push yourself all the way up there, co-sign. Right. Mm. So labels don't even know how to do the work anymore, quite honestly. Yeah. Right. So here's one where of, we are. One of my label friends, who shall remain nameless, and the label will be nameless, said it's just all about the BS now. It's nothing. They know. Yeah. He he, he literally, he kind of just threw his hands up. Because I know this guy personally, and he has tried with multiple artists. And they're, dope, that's terrible. Dope artists. Uh-huh. That's and then it, it goes man. nowhere. That's nowhere. terrible. Because you know why the labels won't put them, they won't put the money behind yeah. it. And here's the thing with streaming, right? So this is all a part of it too. So now you have streaming, nothing physical. Uh-huh. Nobody's really making money now. So the labels have to get in bed with these. When they get in bed with these digital platforms, they're the only ones who are really eating. Yeah. You got to sell a billion. You got to get a billion streams to make 50,000 or some wild light number like that. Right, right. When back in the day you sell a physical copy for ten ninety nine, you're getting 50, 50 cent off the record, mm-hmm. 75 if you're nice with it, depending on what you negotiated, hell, a quarter. And you used your budget wisely and you spent it wisely and you didn't spend $2 million to make the record and you spent Chuck D in the first album, 25000 25000 yeah. Right. So at that point, the whole budget is yours. Yeah. And the recoup is sweet. Yeah. But today, there is no recoup. It's 360. We're spending everything to spin your ass around 360. Mm. Come on over here. Come on. It's like going into a room and into like a slim wall and you go in there like Superman and you go in there regular off the block and you come out like, oh shit, now that's what I'm talking about. Now we can sell you. Right. You're literally product. Product is products. Right. Whether it be crack, coke, or Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. Product is product. Yeah, yeah. So however you market it. And today, unfortunately, that's just where we are. Mm-hmm. And Willie mm-hmm. D says you can market anything with the right budget. Anything. He said a sack of so to your human p- waste. Exactly. <laughs> so to your point of your guy who works at the label, he's frustrated because he's still somebody who believes in mm-hmm. the art and believes in actually putting good music out there and doing the right thing. So... You know, my, my blessings to him. Right, right, right. <laughs> because I feel your pain. You know what I mean? I have yeah. this conversation with I think my he son gave up, car. honestly. I think he gave up. All right, so let's 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 go back. Back okay. back in the day. Back in the day. When I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm still still really really you don't hear songs like that. I really anymore. wish I was a kid again. <laughs> Ahmad. Those were the good old Ahmad. Yeah. The adult thing. Yeah. Yeah. Adult thing is so exhausting. It's like, oh, right. <laughs> don't think it's corny. Don't get real music corny. Yeah. Um, I don't know where to start. Let's start with Ice T. Okay. Let's start with Ice Talk about your relationship with Ice T. Ice T is basically um, my first mentor. Okay. Um, when I lived in LA, because I'm from Newark, New Jersey, Brick City. But we moved to LA when I was younger. And um, I met Ice T when I was probably like 15, 16 years old. Met him in a mall. Me and my homegirls, he was with his friends. We was all chilling. Ice-T was with the girl Darlene. Darlene, the yeah. The queen. The interview queen her. Darlene. Who's all? She's with the guy. Cor- 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 Corey. Corey. Yeah, Holcomb. she does his yeah, show Holcomb. now. Yeah, he does show, yeah. And I was shocked when I saw it. I was like, wow, look at Darlene. But um, anyway, so Ice-T, um, we met. We was cool. We was kicking it. He was like, hey, y'all should come hang out. You know, um, we, do, we, we hang out at the club. Or my boy, you know, Evil E, his DJ. Evil y'all come e. to the mm-hmm. crib, hang out with Evil E, whatever. Just hanging out. It wasn't any of that. Oh, some girls, let's try to bag them. We was talking that East Coast thing when we both was all from the East Coast. Yeah. So that, that was the plug. I had on, and the conversation started because I had on my suede pink pumas. Okay. Because I okay. just couldn't leave. What them. year was this? This right. was like 82, maybe? 82? 82? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's, I didn't this, know this it was, was 82. This was when it was gang banging yeah. in the West Coast, but nobody knew about it. Right, that. right. This was, no, this was when it was gang banging, and over here, they was just saying That's singing, what I'm saying. Right? They didn't know nothing right. about gang banging right. here. That's nothing a whole other story. Yeah. Was, right. Yeah, Bloods and Crips over there is bananas. Not, nothing right. like over here. Yeah, it's, right. but, um, it didn't even exist here. Then. So I had my pink suede pumas, and that's how we struck the conversation. My sister, I think, had on blue ones, the baby blue ones. Right. So it was like, what y'all know about that? Nobody right. in LA don't wear that. They got Vans. Vans, Cortez, Cortez. Converse, exactly. Chuck Taylors. Yeah. Ice T's from that. Jersey, too. People. Exactly. People from yeah. Jersey, so, yeah. 100%. So we struck that conversation up, and that's how we got cool. Then we started hanging out with them at their crib, where his DJ was, Evelyn, his brother, Henji. Henji. Um, uh-huh. 
they are uh, Honduras. Honduras, yeah, yes. Spanish. Look at that. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. You, you be knowing? Yeah. Yeah, so those are my dudes. And um, <laughs> we used to hang out over there, and I used to sing everybody's stuff. Pumpkin and the All-Stars, you name it. Whoever was out oh, back then. Pumpkin right. and the I was just the rhyming king of the every, beat. Hello. I was right. rhyming Just the Ice. Everybody, like, anybody that was out back then, I was a fan of hip-hop. Mm-hmm. I brought my mixtapes with me, you know, everything. I still have my cassettes. I moved a whole caseload of cassettes with me to Cali. I was culture shocked for like six months. I cried. I mm. couldn't get over Did you listen to K Day? You're out there? Uh, <laughs> I'm getting there. A thousand percent. Okay. Yeah. So Ice T uh, was like, you know, everybody else stuff. Why don't you write your own stuff? And I was like, okay. I, like, I wasn't into it at that point is to be a rapper, but I loved the music. Right. Like, I wrote a rhyme and he was like, okay. He's like, no, write something else next time you come back to me, whatever. So I was like, okay. So then I started getting into it. So now I've got notebooks, now I'm writing. I'm just like, ooh, ooh. Oh, and I'm listening to the radio. So who's coming out now? I'm listening to 1580 K Day AM. AM, AM. Greg Mack. Crazy. Absolutely. And Rory was program yep. director. So, damn. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's just bringing back memories right now. Like, that's crazy. Right. So I'm writing, and then I come back to IC again, and he's like, so we know you can rhyme now. You have to open it up a little bit, broaden it up. Right. You know you, you, know you got a spit game. You know you can rap. But and where was he in his career? He was just independently. He was doing um, six Reck- in the morning. Reckless and six in the morning. That shit. Reckless. Yeah, back then. Yeah, that was, that's where he was. Um, because he was he had his own label. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, he never talked about signing me or anything like that. There was no... I mean, he genuinely, genuinely was just a nice person to me back then. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I'm going to, you know, get you in to take you to shows with me. You know, maybe I'll have you open up for me, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. That eventually did happen. But in between time, I wound up connecting. I had a homegirl. Her name was Dawn, who worked at K Day Radio because I saw there was like a show they had. And I was like, well, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try to rap. They loved me. So they had a program. And they was like, you can do all our, you know, park shows. But I was like, cool. You know, I'm not thinking of it in terms of business. Ice Cube did the show. Um, what was Dre and M's crew before? The Re- class, the Rose class, class crew. Crew. Wait, wait. I've done, on, I've been on right. stage with Lonzo. All them. Been on stage with all of them before I, any of this, right? right? Before even. NWA before any of that. Mm-hmm. So doing all this stuff with them out there and um, wind up going to perform for I- with Ice-T. Houdini was on the bill and I believe Run- Running Them was on the bill. Who was managing the club? It was called The Mix in LA. The Mix in LA? The Mix. It wasn't Lonzo, was it? It was Lior Cohen. Lior Cohen, okay. Whoa. Lior Cohen, Managed okay. The Mix, the okay. club. That's crazy. And I was wild young back then, but I was like, Oh, snap. Hence, you know, when you come all the way forward, in hindsight, I'm like, oh, shit, That's this crazy. is crazy. Mm-hmm. So I do the show, and I'm still trying to hold on to my East Coast, whatever. You didn't find no bomber jackets out there, but I found like a wool coat with a hood in it. Right. So I was like, it's my bomber jacket. You know what I mean? And I tried to still keep my East Coast thing up. I opened up, I did it, did the show. I met Houdini and all of them backstage, and Lior tells, tells I see later on, he's like, I love this girl, but you know she curses a lot. <laughs> If she would not curse so much, she would probably be really good. Like, it wasn't dope or anything back then. Maybe it was fresh, but he's like... That was immaculate. <laughs> By the way. That was a good impression. Yeah. Perfect. That was a good impression. I like this skin. I like this skin. <laughs> like, Leo Cohen is like... He's, he's... Like, a lot of people have their idea about Leo and I have mine. We can talk about that, too. Mm-hmm. But, um... So, I started to do shows with Ice-T. So, then now I'm, like, off on my own. Kind of, like, moving around, doing things. But still clicked up with Ice-T. Still going places. Um, I went to the Fresh Fest when it was out there. Uh-huh. Met um, Houdini and them again. That's when uh, JD was dancing for them. Yep, JD um, danced for Houdini. Met Ducky Fresh for the first time at the at the at the amphitheater, the Anaheim Amphitheater, uh-huh. where they did a show. And I went backstage and I met Ducky, and he was like, "Yo, you fresh? Yeah. Like you got it? You got it?" First time I met Ducky, I met everybody, Russell, all of them at least once. Right. But not like on some. I'm doing music with Russell. I just saw him in pass, and it was just like. He was Russell. He's like, nice to meet you. How you doing? Da, 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 da. Like, oh, <laughs> He's moving on. <laughs> so these guys always stayed at the Beverly Hills Hotel. But we're young. We're moving around. We're hanging out. I hung out with an audition, Bobby Brown. I mean, L.A., believe it or not, was a big industry scene back then. You know what I mean? Especially for singers right. and actors, of course. But we hung out with more artists than we did anything. It was You would think we'd be more Hollywood. Right. But it wasn't. It was more like, you know, singers and rappers. And I used to listen to the radio, and I was like, damn, Beastie Boys, dope. Just Ice, dope. LL, dope. Houdini, Run DMC. You start to hear these people on the radio. I'm going to these parties. Nothing like our parties. Uncle Jam's Army. 
Mm. Uh, things are like 120 beats per minute, maybe right. faster. Mm -hmm. Like it's all of that. So we're still trying to hold on to some kind of culture where we could be a part of the shit that we just left, that we love. Right. Right. And um, so we're doing all the, I'm hanging out, doing all these shows and stuff. And finally, um, I decide now I'm like, okay, it's time for me to like really take it serious. So my homegirl who worked at the radio station was like, listen, um, I got some boys in LA who are working on LL Cool J's Bigger and Deeper. Because I was like, I need to be the first female rapper there. I swear on everything I love. This is what I set out my mouth. Like, this was my goal. Talk to them too. I was like, I needed to be the first female rapper on Def Jam because that was what was happening. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is where the artist is at. Russell, Def Jam. That's all you heard back yeah, then, that's right? That's a fact. So, what else are you going to be? LA wasn't making it happen like that yet. Mm. You know what I mean? There was no other region that was doing it like that. So, it was right. New York. Got to get there. So I'm talking to them on the phone. It was like, we don't believe, cuz let me hear you say something, right? They from the West Coast, but they over there talking about, come on, cuz, say something. So I'm on the phone, I rhyme. They was like, oh, you gotta get your ass out here. So they're in New York City. Bobcat. Bobcat, LA. Muffler, right. Daryl, the LA Posse. The LA Posse. Exactly. So like, you gotta get out they're of here. They're in New York. They're in New York. That's crazy. And I'm in LA. Right. We're gonna switch places. Right. right. That's crazy. And I'm like, okay, I gotta get out there. So. My homegirl was like, well, we ain't got no money. I was like, she's like, we need luggage. We need this. We need that. So I knew my mother had a five-piece of luggage set. She had a car that her father just gave her. It was a Volkswagen Bug. We used to be hitting the city all day with that shit. She was like, I'm going to sell it back to my father. I said, how you going to sell them the car? She was like, because we need the money. We get get the bus tickets. So we took the bus back. Sold the car back to her father. Gave her $800. Wow. We went and bought bus tickets. Hmm. I got my mother's luggage. I want my luggage back. I told my mother. Swear on everything. Mom, I'm going to New York City. Russell Simmons waiting on me. He doesn't sign me. I never had a conversation with the man about signing no deal with him. Mm. Never had a conversation with Russell about that. So we get on the Greyhound bus. We green. I've been in LA now for a few years at this point. So I'm fast forwarding through a lot of like just my regular lifestyle, going to high school out there, yeah. dating a gangbanger, and then getting real, shot at. With yeah, real quick. What part of LA were you in? West. I was in West LA. West LA? Yeah, okay. like National. Okay. Oh. I mean, how'd you go to school out there? Hamilton High. Hamilton High. Hey, I went to two schools in LA, so I'll back up a little bit. So, the, so when I when I was going to high school out there, I wanted to go to Crenshaw. Crenshaw, I'm gonna say Crenshaw. <laughs> I, mean, get... I wanted to go to Crenshaw High. My Why? Was, Cause it was we heard, we came from Newark. It right. was like we want to be where it's at. Right. We heard Crenshaw was it, and my mother was like, she went and looked for an apartment in that neighborhood. My mother was like, mm -mm, y'all too happy about this shit. Right. She said nah, and we wound up moving to West LA. This is after we lived in Culver City with my aunt. Because right, right. Culver City is beyond suburbia. Uh -huh, yeah. Super supreme suburb, right? Culture shock. Yeah. High school, 90%, maybe 93% white. Right. The rest was black. Pep rallies. Hey, Nikki, mm -hmm. you want to do the pep rally? No. Hey, Nikki, you want to go to football games? Sure. Because I like the Fritos and the chili that go on top of it and all mm -hmm. the West Coast snacks and all that shit. And hanging out with the boys. So that was cool. But hanging out with the girls, they were so like preppy and so just like, eh, and I wasn't that girl. Right. Um, me and my sister, we was we was from the East Coast. So we was with all of that. But anyway, um, I was and I was dating this guy one time when I moved to we moved and we went to high school at Hamilton High, and the gangs were so bad in L.A. that during our lunch break, so first of all, the schools are like college campuses. Let's just start there, pools, shops mechanics, all of that. Anything you name had its own building. Mm -hmm. So during our lunchtime, they would have the guards around all of the whole campus because the rival gangs would come there. Mm -hmm. And they was trying to get after this one guy one time. I'll never forget. They was trying to get after this one guy one time. And when they came for him, they wound up somehow on the campus. He ran, jumping over the gate. Mm. And when he jumped over the gate, because it was the big gates with the, the big like metal ones with the... Yeah. Yo, he snapped his finger, boop, fell right mm. on the ground. Like Ooh. he cut it, like he jumped on it, and it just ripped right off. And we was like, oh. Mm. And it was like, then it was like, going to school, everybody going to the hallways, going to the girl, going to the building, going to, because it was a big deal out there. Like yeah. the gangs was real out there. That's why when people talk about all this, I feel like, <laughs> y'all killing each other because somebody said something? They be doing real things in LA. Yeah. They go in your house. Right. They be in the crib, but they be get it too. Like, it's sad. It's not nothing to brag about. And I'm definitely not glorifying it. But I also saw the crack ever happen there. Mm. I was in L.A. when the crack started. Right. right. And that's where it started. Right. Right. Like, people might 
you know, in, in New York, yes, it was already, but it, and it got here quick. Because by the time I got here, it was like, damn, there's crackheads all over this place. Uh-huh. But in LA, I was also dating a guy who was a drug dealer. And I was sitting in the trap house and didn't even know it was a trap. I was just like, you know, you're dumb, you're young. Right. You're hanging out with a guy, right? right? You know, that's your drug dealer boyfriend, whatever. But you don't even see it like that. Because right. we're not, I ain't got all this jewelry from him. I'm not, it's just my, you know, the guy who gives me money and, you know, uh-huh. buy me something here and there, but it's my boyfriend. Right. And you're not even thinking of yourself being in danger at that time, but you are. Right. A thousand percent in danger, um, in hindsight. Um, so, you know, we did all the regular stuff. So I'm dating one guy, um, and we his El Camino. So I don't know if people know what El Camino is. He had Dayton's on it? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the reason why I'm telling you Come on, story. I know what's going on. He had, he had my mother and my mother, old school, you going out here, take the $20 just in case, you know, mm-hmm. you're going to give you that money so you get back home in case somebody mm-hmm. acts stupid. So we're dating, we, we go to Del Taco, not Taco Bell, Del, Del Taco. Taco. There's a difference, right? right? Mm-hmm. And we're sitting in the parking lot, and he's got, we're in the car, he got gold dates. Gold dates. El Camino. Mm. We sit in the car, and we just chilling. And probably maybe five minutes into eating, on the window, 357, right in our face. Mm. One on my side, one on his side. He said, get out. No problem. I get the fuck out. Right. I don't know what's going on. I'm right. like, okay, I'm out. I get out the car. This fool that I'm dating, they telling him, give me the keys, give me the keys, because that's how it was in LA. Yeah. They're gonna kill you, but they kill you if you don't do what you gotta do. Mm-hmm. Right. Give me the keys. So as I'm I'm gone. I'm already midway through the park, a lot of more way, but I could still hear kind of the conversation because yeah. I'm moving. I'm not looking back because I don't want to see nobody, I don't want to hear nothing. I know, yeah. I know how this shit go. Going on about my business. And I guess he decided, he told me, but he what he did was he decided to snatch the keys after he gave the keys to the dude. Uh-huh. And then he snatched him and ran, and all I heard was pow, pow, uh-huh. pow, pow, pow. Crazy gunshots. It's a 357. Uh-huh. So you know that barrel is big. You yeah. know that shell is big. Right. Right? So you hear all of that. So I'm gone. I'm like, holy shit. Where were y'all at? Buddy. We was in LA on Where, where, where? On Crenshaw? Yeah, on Crenshaw. we was in the Crenshaw hood. Square? Uh, probably. Okay. Weber Del Taco Weber was at 10? that time. Okay. We out. I'm out. I'm at least four or five blocks up. He found me. What? He got his car. What? And he found me. Wow. He like getting the car. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ooh. like getting the car. I'm like, no. He said, get your ass in the car. Trust me, they not behind me. Yo, I gave the car, Chuck. I see all these bullet holes right by his head. Oh my God. Like big, like big solid holes. I'm like, yo. He said, I'm gonna get you back home. I said, I'm in the car the whole time. Lord, please let me get back home to my mother. The one mm. thing you can't do is tell my mother her baby not here. Oh, Lord. Mm. Like you, that, that's kind of got me out of a lot of stuff. Mm. Like, I would sit there and just be praying and just like, Lord, you just cannot call my mother. And dude, I could, I would never do this again, Lord. Like, it's like that time when you get drunk, you be like, God, if right. I wake up tomorrow, I'll never drink like that again. Yeah. That's how I felt about uh. that situation. And he took me home. He got me home. And then after that, I never talked to him again because I was like, you're dangerous. Right. Right. <laughs> he tried. He tried, I'm and sure. He was, and here's the thing. He wasn't a gangbanger. He wasn't. He wasn't. He was actually a military guy. Okay. He was a young guy who went to like, what do you call it? The recruit, like uh, the reserve. Right. Reserve. Or National Regard. Yeah, something National like, Regard. like it was for right. younger right. people. It wasn't yeah. like you were going to war or anything like that. The other guy I was dating was definitely like, but again, you're just dating. You're not really sleeping with these guys. Like you just think you're doing something, right? right? This guy just started to date me and wanted to take me out. And I was like, okay, cool. Uh. I said, never again. This will never, ever happen. Right. So, long story short, L.A. is definitely the real deal. Yeah. And then there was another quick story that happened in L.A. that Dana Dane and Salt and Pepper could tell you about. Um, it's funny because I wound up um, hanging out with them at some point at a concert that they had. Uh-huh. And they, um, I'll never forget, they either ran, I don't know what happened with them. They ran out of money. Or they missed their flight. Something happened where they didn't have no more money. Mm. Mm. And they were stranded in L.A. Where'd they stay? In my house. <laughs> Salt and Pepper and, and Dana, Dana Dane. Dana. And, Dana would, and Dana loves this story. He'd be like, Nikki, you'll tell him about the story. I'd be like, no, you can tell him. <laughs> That's crazy. They wound up at my house. What year was that? Eating. Oh, this was like early on, like like 83, somewhere right, around right. there. Nightmares they had was show, out? Showstopper, Showstopper. Nightmares. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cause it was like Slick Rick had come, but it was like Dana Dane. Everybody was saying Dana Dane was the, you know, the next up. They, do you remember they were saying he Dan was Dane like was the, same. that he was mimicking Slick Rick. If you know. okay, well, he used to you. hang out with Slick Rick. They used to the be Kangle. friends. Yeah, yeah, they had a crew. Yeah, right. crew. Kango crew. Right. Right. So they were kind of saying that's what it was, but I thought they were different. I still did. Right. Um, 
but anyway, they wound up at my house and staying there. Like, I mean, I just was, I ran into all these people. So it's all for me, I feel like it was destined. Yeah. You know what I mean? To right. get there. Um, and so I how just, did, how did Def Jam, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to pick piece this together. Cause I, I know some of the story, but I didn't know all of this. I ain't gonna <laughs> that was that. That's why I said I, I passed forward lie. past a lot of stuff. Yeah, no, no. no but all yeah. those things were in. Th- all those things were in there. And instrumental I, in her getting. Yes, the they were all like part of my process. So how did this coalesce into <laughs> getting <laughs> signed? Yeah, I got you. So now we get on the Greyhound bus. Mm-hmm. We're back to the tickets. We're back to the, the bus. Right. We on the bus now. Right. We're back on to get the bus. Peace, LA. Get this deal. <laughs> Get on the bus. We go to New York. We green because now I'm, I'm now I'm a little bit more acclimated to LA. So now I'm just like, mm. you know, green I got the braids. Right. Like I'm dope. I got the little accent. You know, I got that little hair. Like I got, you know, I got the I got the golden tone. I got that sunshine. Right. You know, that sun kissed skin. I got all that. So <laughs> um, we get to New York and Forty Second Street in 1986 was what? Woo! Wow. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. Whoa. Yeah. Right. So imagine arriving. And Times Square, and everybody is a hoe and a pimp. Right. And everybody is a drug addict and a drug dealer. Yeah, that was everybody. crazy. Everybody. Me and my friend got off the bus, and uh, we and plus on the way down there. Now the other thing is that people don't know is a lot of people who are going to rehab or getting out or dealing with lives, or getting out of jail, trying to go somewhere. They all on that bus. Mm-hmm. Uh. They on that Greyhound bus too. So I'm out with them as well on the Greyhound bus and they get into the, and, and then one guy was like, you know, one guy was like, yeah, 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 I don't need to be on this bus. I'm telling you, when you get to New, 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 get into New York, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, 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 should hang out with me. And we, I was like, uh, no. we, right, we good, we got, we got family. No, we all right. So when we get to New York, we get to Brooklyn where the LA Posse was living with, they had a roommate in the Brownstone in Brooklyn. Okay. We get to New York and um, we're hanging out with them for a little bit and we're thinking that we could stay there, but the roommate is like, Mm-mm, they can't stay here. Mm. So we're like, oh shit. So we up with all five pieces of luggage, mm. down with all five pieces of luggage in a couple of days. Then I go to my aunt's house, stay with my aunt for a little bit in Newark. Mm. Um, my friend Dawn is pretty. She's young, we're 18, 19 years old. She's pretty. And my friend Dawn is, and my aunt is like, after a few days, after about a week or so, yeah, I can't have these girls around my husband like that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Me? Your aunt. Yeah. And we're not understanding it. We're just like, okay, so now our luggage is now out. Now we off on our own. We don't even know where we stand, right? So we're staying where we can. We stay here. We stay there. People we know, we know a friend over here. When the girl is not there, we stay with the LA Posse. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm, there's times where mm-hmm. we, you know, we just find a, a couch to lay on. You hold us, though, basically. 100%. Yeah. So we take our stuff back to the Newark Penn Station and put it in the lockers. Mm-hmm. The lockers were like 75 cents. You could put all your stuff, your luggage in the lockers. We come back one day, all our shit gone. I brought my, let me tell you, I brought every brown book I ever had with me. So I had like 10 notebooks gone. Mm. Everything I wrote up until that point in my life was gone. Oh man, that's that, that shit was like going to your bank account. Right, they're telling you it's zero there, and they know what you could do. Oh man, that shit was that shit was devastating. Yeah, it was devastating. I bought everything. I bought oh. my roller skates. Right, I bought <laughs> I bought everything, but it was devastating, right? So now we like, damn. The only thing that left was the hygiene bag. So we said, good, at least we got that. So then we go back and forth between there. We sleeping at the World Trade Center. Mm. Homeless people know we don't belong there. Homeless people giving us food. If you ever oh. want to wash up, you go to Burger King. Oh. They let you wash up. Right. You just go in there. It's okay. You just go in there and buy your juice or something. Or if you can't, then, then go to the bathroom. They let you. This white guy, big frumpy old white guy, you the greasy hair, and he would say, "I you, you just go in Burger King. They let you wash up here. Just just for you right now. Oh. And come back later. I might be around." We just was moving. Yeah. And we never even looked at it like we were in just the worst position in life. Because yeah. you're young. Yeah. Uh-huh. You don't care. Uh-huh. You live in your life. You know what I mean? You don't care. Yeah. So, finally, through all of the trials and tribulations, um, I'm going to just fast forward now I am because there's so much shit in between. That means I'm going to be giving you my book and y'all got to read that. <laughs> um, so, we're going to fast forward to... <laughs> Almost had the, it. The, the, <laughs> the, the day when Muffler was like, when y'all come, you ask to the studio. You got your song ready, Bobcat. I was like, let me come over there and let y'all hear the songs. Now, Bobcat was my first Tupac, and let me tell you why. 
Okay. Because Bobcat was very prolific. He was very intense. Mm -hmm. He was very serious about everything. And he would curse at you if he thought what you was doing was dumb. It just it was his language. Mm -hmm. Bob, because the fuck nobody wanna hear that shit. Like, nah, nobody wanna hear that shit like that. Like you just go go in there and say it like that. Nobody wanna hear that shit like that. Like, what the fuck? My shit is dope. Like, right, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So, but then he was like, you go in there in that room, say that shit ten times over. And if it sounds the same, when you come out at the ten times, then you don't want this shit. Mm. You just, you just, you just doing what everybody else doing. Mm. And I'm so like, he was a okay. gatekeeper. We oh, don't absolutely. Have that no it was serious back then. That's why the craft is very serious to me, and that's why I look at it that way today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I did come from a place where people really, really cared about how you did it and yeah. when you did it and why you did it. Yeah. You feel me? You just couldn't do it. And bigger and deafer is. It might be LL's best album. And people love that album. They mm -hmm. absolutely put it where you put it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going over the songs and two songs. Going over the songs and he coming in, he was like, okay, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. He said, you might be able to get it. You might be able to get it. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're going to play me out. Yeah. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get this. So they booked the studio time. The studio time was booked for LL, though. Right. And it was like, don't worry. He always come two, three hours late. You just come <laughs> in and sneak in on LL's time. So I got to cut my demo on LL's time. On LL's budget. Mm. <laughs> on LL's budget. Thank you, Cool J. Oh, James Todd. Shout out to James Todd and that Def Jam budget. Yeah. But you know what's crazy about that, though? So I go in. I do the songs in under two hours, right? And I, my girlfriend that was with me, my friend, she was my DJ. Because everybody had a DJ. Mm -hmm. All the female rappers then had a DJ, and they were females. She know nothing about no damn. I was gonna say because she <laughs> not a damn right. thing, Craig. Nothing, <laughs> not a damn thing. So she was my DJ, and it was like I had a song, and it was like my name is Mama and Betty, and that and that Betty, and I, and I, and I, and I, you not really a steady, and it was like that. There was that whole flow, right? Mm -hmm. And then it was another song. Female rappers in the Harlem cold house in the set, and when I rhyme, you will find them taxing all girl press. Nikki D is in the place. I'm tearing up the stage. When you find that I'm the hungry, you will uh, you will amaze. When I rhyme, I will ah uh, at the. So I had that whole energy mm -hmm. that was happening back then because that's what I was. Feeding off of mm -hmm. Run DMC, LL Cool J, I fed off of all that. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing was that, uh, ah, like it was all that energy, right? So I did it. It was done. But when we went to go mix the song just so we could get it to a place where it sounded good, there was no Pro Tools. We wasn't using that. Mm -hmm. We was in Chung King. Right. Rats running all over the place. That Chung King. <laughs> the, the Chung King with Lady of Rage, Chunk. actually. And I let Lady of Rage to tell you that story, but she also spent the night at Chung King. That's where she stayed. She was trying to get her career going in New York. Right. And me and her are like this, yeah. still to this day. Um, but rats Shout all over the her. place. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Lady of Rage, who's on tour right now, World Tour with Snoop mm -hmm. and Dog Pound. Get it, sis. Yeah. Absolutely. Who won't do an interview with me because she don't do interviews yet. I know she's going to Robin be crazy. I know. I got to talk to her. <laughs> I got to talk to her. She'd be like, I don't Love her, know, though. man. I don't know. Let me see. Yeah. So out of that. we're doing a demo. So here's the thing. When you on a non-automated board and when it's time for the hook to come in you grab the snares you grab the kick and i'm gonna release the bass uh -huh. so it's four of us at the board like this uh -huh. and then you're waiting for the four bar count or the eight bar count to come back and, uh -huh. and hope that you do it right if not we're doing that shit uh -huh. all night until we get it right uh -huh. Unlike Pro Tools, where you just pick, copy, paste, wave, cut, da, 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 the, the, the rapper could go on about his life today. You come lay your, you want double, just lay one good one, we got you. Mm -hmm. You want Alibs, run out with him, but don't worry, we got Fly you. Yeah. Have a good night. Not then. You know what I mean? We took 24, we took almost two days. We stayed at Unique Studios and mixed Daddy's Little Girl, 48 hours. Mm. Two days. Like, two days. It's a, it's a big song. If you play it today, the bottom, the heaviness, the warmth, the solidness, the body of that song, just the track alone is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Soon as it come on, it lights up any arena, any studio. It's crazy. But that was the difference in doing analog to digital today. Right. So that was us mixing the demo. Anyway, now we ripping and running the streets. We're trying to go to any club, trying to run into Russell, trying to see him. I done met MC Shan. I done met everybody, right? So, and Shan will tell you that Audi 5000 came from me. That was my. That was my. I created that. Ooh, wow, really? <laughs> Where'd you get it from? He had a red Audi at the time. Red Audi. And when I met him, he had come to the house one time where we was hanging out with Muffler and them. Mm -hmm. And he had come to the house one time, and me and him just got super cool. Another brother sister kind of thing, right? Got super cool. And came outside. I was like, "Oh, you got an Audi?" 
Oh, you Audi, and it was, I think it was an Audi 5000. 5000, like yeah. 5, yeah, it was an Audi 5000. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you Audi 5000. He wow. said, oh, he said, I'm going to keep using that, sis. He said, I'm going to use that. Wow, so Audi you coined 5, the term Audi 5000. Look, we just crazy. learned something today. Yeah. We definitely learned something. I deserve yeah. some hand clap. <laughs> Come on, man, give it up. <laughs> that was a big yeah. deal. And Flav ran with it and took it to Ice Cube used to say that. Ice Cube said that yeah. on Boys in the Hood, Audi 5000. And, right, right. and I gave it to Shan. Look at that, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So um, he had the red Audi 5000. Well, Audi was, was like, just for oh, money. Audi, what's up? <laughs> I need one too. Hello. I was like, oh, you Audi 5000. Yeah. So that's that's where that term came from. But anyway, we, you know, running around, I done hung out with Russell at Nails. Not oh. Russell, but the beat. This was afterwards, actually, matter of fact, I'm lying because this was after I got the deal. But I hung out in different places. And finally, one night, we all come back to the crib where they live in Brooklyn in the Brownstone where LA Posse lives. Mm uh-huh. And back then you had answer machines. So we playing voice notes, voicemails, playing the voicemails. Yeah, 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 yo. What's up, LA Posse? What the fuck y'all doing? Yo, yeah, give me a demo of this girl. What's her name? Um, I don't know the bitch name. This is exactly what he said. And we sitting there. And I'm like, and he's like, yeah, 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 I want to sign. I want to sign. I want to give her the same deal that I gave. We all like, no. Because he had gotten a demo. Right. And we all like, no. We jumping around. And we was like, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. And then he played again. He was like, no, there's another man. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened to the bitch said the name 10 times. Nikki D, Nikki D. That's what I want to sign. I want to sign. I want to go the same deal. I can't breathe. I want to bring it to all. I want to listen. Motherfuckers, they better make a big motherfucking record with Nikki D. I just, just fucking my first female. The fucking better make it happen. And is this the B word, though? Absolutely. A thousand percent. <laughs> a thousand percent. And, and people would be like, I didn't care about that. Like, I'm about to get the deal. Like, right, right, right. And it's not, and I guess it would be the equivalent. It's not the equivalent, but you call me bitch. That's one thing if you want to, you know, that's. So, but he, this is him not knowing I'm even there. You right, know what I mean? Right. Listening to it. This is him being a man, talking the way dudes talk about women, I guess, back then. Because I was a bitch named Dickie D. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, so she's tired. I want the same deal. Yo, we're so ecstatic and broke. <laughs> we jumping up and down all yeah. over. We're broke as hell. We're broke. We're jumping all over the place. We're scraping up money to get 40 ounces to celebrate. Mm. 40 ounces of old English to celebrate. O-E. So we all got some money when it comes. We sitting and we jumping around. We hot. We running through the house for like three hours. Right. Bugging. Got the deal. Call my mother. Well, I need a lawyer. I got the deal. She's like, oh, that's a nice baby. The man going to give you the record? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the record deal. I got the record. That's nice, baby. Mom, I need a lawyer. You don't got a lawyer? Let me see. She found some retired lawyer. From oh, DC. Lord. Right. Real quick before you continue. How long did it take for that to happen? When you got off the bus... To that moment. About I'll, six months. That took six months. About so six, six months. months so all, about six, six months. Six months, okay. It literally took about six months. Six that was months. crazy. Um, it took me longer after that, though, to get a single out, to get a song out, to get... Right. Then he started, like, giving me, like, I guess, artist development, if you will. That took, you said, like, three years, right? Did no, that I lived in... No, when oh. I got to... When I got to... When I got to um, New York, it was 87? Uh-huh. 86? 87. 80, and then... After I got to New York, it took six months for him to actually to sign you. Yeah, to sign, to sign me. Right. Because we did the demo. I moved here. I slayed here. I did all these things, all this shit in between. And he signed me. And still, even after he signed me, I was still, I mean, hello, I wasn't rich. Right. Um, Got a little tiny advance, but it wasn't nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. And my attorney, mm. <laughs> he didn't have an office. We did the contracts on in the park. Mm. So we meet up in the park and did mm. the contracts. Mm. Um, It was a standard Def Jam deal back then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So your music, your life. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, it was a standard. How many deal. albums was it for? Or was it, it was for ten. Ten it was, albums. It was, ten albums. It was a ten album deal. All right. And it was a it was a mm-hmm. ten album deal with a five year contract, right? So it was like two albums. They was they was expecting two albums a year, kind of sort of wow. like even though they wasn't putting them out like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So they expected like, and it was kind of like the trickery of it. You know what I mean? Like you still got to give us these ten albums. How you got to give them? Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And then we keep creating these options. There's these options. These options at the end of every term. Mm-hmm. They hit the option to extend. Right. You know what I mean? And get the first right of refusal for everything. Right. Right. So at that point, um, we are doing uh he, he he doesn't have space for me right now to put me out. He don't know what to do, he just know he wants me in on the list. Yeah. So now I'm doing things like going on tour with Houdini and him funding my per diem. Per diem for those who don't notice the money you get, you can hang out daily so that you can eat, so that you can have a room, so that you can whatever. And when I tell you I saw some things on the tour, I saw some things. Debauchery. Woo! That's why I was never shocked when it got to the point where I could actually do my own tours and saw stuff. Oh. But I was just still like, "Yeah, this is crazy. Right. Like, I remember I had a bull box, and I won't name the artist. It was a very big tour. And he told him, he's like, don't y'all be trying to 
if anything happened to her, all y'all motherfuckers gonna get it. Like that was Russell's thing. He was extremely protective of me, and that I'll put out there too because I know there's a lot of negative stuff about him about how he dealt with women and all. Mm-hmm. He was extremely nice, extremely protective, always looked out for me. Anything to this day, mm-hmm. I can call Russell. Ru- Russell will be like, "Nigga, day of your birthday, mm-hmm. I'll be sixty five thousand dollars." Like he does what? No, Today? yeah. What? Russell will do that. Wow. Absolutely. Well, tell him I'm your cousin. <laughs> My birthday's next week. He does it. He does it. <laughs> Russ. And then Russ. I'll be like, I'm I serious did. about it. He'll be like, nigga, you know, I ain't got no money, but let me see what I can come up with. Oh, that's what's up. He'll be like, no, I ain't got no money. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You ain't got none. So whatever you come up with, I'm fine with that. But um, he would send me on tour. I would have a per diem. I would always have my check. Bert Padel always gave us the money. Bert Padel was the big. He was the big I have his poetry book. Really? He has a book of poetry. Yeah. He was the big accountant back then. Yeah, big For thing. everybody. Um, Bert Padel. So I would get all my money from him. I would go there and get petty cash. So the petty cash was, he would cash the check and just give it to me. Because mm-hmm. I didn't have a bank account or have anything. So he would just give me, I would think it was more like four or $500 a week I would have just to be on the road. I would have my own room. So one day I had a radio boom box. And a big artist was like, well, let me hold your radio. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I wanted to come back and get it. Because every day they kept saying, oh, get it tomorrow, get it tomorrow. And I was like, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, at that point, I was like, you're trying to sell me for my radio. I'm going to come get my shit one day. Right. So the day I go to get it, um, you remember Crush Groove? And, and nobody could figure out what was happening down the hallway. And the more you walk down the hallway, you like you get closer to it. But it's a line. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why is there a line in a hallway at a hotel? I'm walking down the hallway. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, run. Going down the hallway. Like, what's going on? And the more I get to it, it's nothing but guys on the line, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Continue. Mm-hmm. It's nothing but guys on the line. So by the time I get to my room where the artist is, and I want my radio, I walk past the line, and one familiar person in the line, I was like, what y'all doing here? And he was like, what you doing here? I said, I can't even get my radio. He's like, nigga, I don't think that's a good time. Because the door was still cracked. It was open. They pretty much owned the hotel. Because it was a bunch of different groups. So I go into the room, and I'm like, yo, give me my fucking radio, yo. And he was like, are you going to take that shit now? I said, yeah, because you had it for almost a week now. Give me my radio. In the middle of him smashing. Wow. And everybody else waiting their turn to smash. Groupies were out of control back wow. then. And the girl was fine with everything. She was not being tortured. She was not being wow. hard. She wasn't being any of that. She was absolutely... So who had the radio? I said, I'm not that. I know that. I was trying to say. Yeah, that absolutely. Week was it LL? I absolutely would never tell you who had the radio. I'm going to guess if my radio. You can guess all you want like to. It, uh, there was, was a lot of people on that yeah. tour. Mama, what tour was this? It was a big tour. Ah. Who did, it was Fresh Fest? It was a big tour. What year? No, it wasn't Fresh Fest. It was a big tour. What tour was it? It was a big tour. <laughs> Which year? It was a big tour. <laughs> Just go back and look at tours. <laughs> what year was this? <laughs> but yeah, it was a good tour. Anyway. Oh, man. Um, so she, she's media. Wow. The wow. artist development was go out on the road and see how the shows are done, see how the performances are mm. done, see how serious these guys take their craft, all that stuff. There was no women out there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I got that, and then I wound up getting on a song with Davey D called Clap Your Hands. Davey DMX did it. Mm-hmm. Did that. Then I wound up getting on Allison Williams, My Love Is Raw. Mm-hmm. Like he slowly kept, because it just took them a minute to get to me. Mm-hmm. I didn't put a record out right away. Yeah. It took him so long, I didn't wind up with a boyfriend and a baby. You feel me? Right. So by the time daddy's little girl came out, I was already a mother and everything. Right. Yeah. So, um... That's what I was saying, the three years part. Like, it took... Oh, a, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it took a while for that mm-hmm. to happen. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I was a prototype. And this is what I yeah. like to tell these, these women out here, too. Yeah. They say you didn't do anything because you didn't sell 10 million records. I absolutely did. I did it so you wouldn't have to. Yeah. So what I did was become the person that they could actually figure out what to do. You put a, a a blank painting on the wall and you just go, nah, not that color. No, not that shirt. Yeah. No, not that sound. No, not that track. No, not that look. Like, yeah. And then until they figure it out, and it, mm-hmm. it's because they can't figure it out, I'm the one who loses. Yeah. Mm. You understand? So now we know we can't do that with this. Let's do this now with this one. Mm-hmm. So the more people understand that there had to be somebody else before you in order to be great. Uh-huh. And there had to be somebody else who got God in order for you to be great uh-huh. because they had to figure out what it was. Yeah. So when you look at other artists from back in the day, don't look at them like they didn't do anything. Right. They were right. prototypes. Yeah. Yeah. For the label to figure out what the hell to really do, especially yeah. when it comes to females. I wanted to ask you, I actually got a bunch of questions, but you came out in 91 mm-hmm. and then Boss came out in 93. Yes. That was quick. That was yeah. a quick flip. Yep. 
Um, how did you feel about that? And I don't know. It just felt different when she came out because the prototype. Yeah. But I was just saying, so right. Me and Boss were also like this. Uh-huh. Me and the show, just like this. It's to this day, if I could find her. Yeah, her I'm looking for her too. Lawyer. Is she? I don't know about that. Yeah, she went to law school. She's she, not a lawyer. She was she's definitely not a lawyer. She she was she was she was very she sick. Detroit, right? Well, yeah, she might went to school, but she, she was going to Michigan Detroit. Law School. That's she was she having was. kidney problems too. Yeah, she had right. a big kidney issue. She was on a she was a radio DJ for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but um, when she came, when she came, me and her clicked. It was her and D, uh-huh. her homie. They was tight. And they was Russell gave them his Bowery apartment because he had moved over to Tower 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 Records was on on the Fourth Street. I think that's what that was. He moved over there, so he gave them that apartment. That's where they stayed because it was cheaper to just give them. Like that was when the whole corporate apartment thing was. We put artists up in apartments or whatever, so that you don't have to keep them in hotels. Because uh-huh. I also was in a hotel. I was in an army hotel for a long time. Russell put me there. Also, when I came to New York, once he signed me, uh-huh. so that was also a thing. Um, they would put you up in places so to save the money. He already owned the apartment. He put uh-huh. them in there. They kind of got a little wild. Mm-hmm. Um, they were, they 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 were definitely from the D in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and having a lot of uh, issues. So anyway, um, she when Boss came out, Boss had kind of already came, and I don't know who signed Boss and where she came from. But when she came, I think the whole look and everything, the whole gangster look. Because remember, we had NWA now. Uh-huh. We had a couple other things that she could actually feed off of, uh-huh. and I was uh-huh. feeding off more so of. The lyrical side of everything, uh-huh. right? So you got Boss now who's coming and feeding off. She got lyrics down and she got imaging, right? So uh-huh. now uh-huh. she has something to really push from. Yeah. I didn't feel any way because I am, it for lack of better, I'm, I'm more like welcoming. I'm, I'm that person. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like I want everybody to win. I want everybody to eat. So I never see anybody as a problem. Yeah. You know, I even, even when Foxy came along, but that's a whole nother story. She became a problem. A hundred percent. But anyway. Well, um, we'll talk about that <laughs> next. Boss, um, <laughs> Foxy kind of crazy though. I ain't gonna lie. Listen, I'll tell you a funny story one time. But Boss was truly a, a dope artist to me, and I think um, I don't really wanna feel like I'm in the days. Mm-hmm. So I smoke big kills just to deal with the ills. Yo, she was crazy with it. Yeah, yeah I remember Shout that. Out to yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, they, because you know, they cleared it. Yeah, yeah. You know what it. I mean? Yo, it took yo. You know Susan Vega when we went to clear that song? Mm. It took almost everything. I was going to ask you about that. I believe it. She took almost everything. I believe it. She didn't want to clear nobody. Yeah. That was the first song she cleared. Wow. Ever. Now you see everybody do it. Even Drake used it right. on his first album. Right, yeah. But when I did it, nobody had used it yet. She was like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, let me hear the song. Mm. And she said, like, oh, wow, this is a really great song. I like this song. <laughs> well, I mean, I need at least half. It was like, wow. Of what? Right. But Russell was like, this, 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 that's okay. It's a big record. They're going to get more. They're going to break markets. Mm-hmm. Like, that was the whole... Yo, you and Russell. It's okay. They're going to get more. Don't worry about it. And I was like, okay. But Boss was... I didn't feel any way about Boss. I, I welcomed her. We did a dope photo shoot together. Me, her, God rest her soul, um, Hurricane G, who I mm-hmm. absolutely love. Another one. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Somebody so true to my heart. And I felt... And, and it's crazy because when I found out G died, I was literally looking for her. Because I was like, we need to put a record out. I need to do G and we need to put a record out. I'm going to find Robin. And we all going to do a record. Robin being Lady of Rage. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a record out. Then literally a few days later. Yeah, she passed. That shit was crazy. Rest in peace. But um, I'm always very welcoming of people. And I felt like with Boss, I felt like I had a a sister at the label at that point. Mm -hmm. Somebody, a cousin. Somebody I I could rock with because I was only rocking with the dudes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been on tour with EPMD. I was doing shows with Red Man. I was doing, I was with Public Enemy. You know what I mean? Like, they welcomed me with open arms, but I felt like I wanted some kind of camaraderie with a female, and Boss was it. And we really got cool. And um, again, Boss had one album. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. the one album thing was me deciding to yeah. not be with the label anymore. And right. words of Jay Z, uh, uh, I dropped the label. The label didn't drop me. Yeah. So yeah. that's what happened with me. Like, I had a conversation after the second. The second album was complete. Really? The second album was done by the Bomb Squad. Dude. I have a whole second album. What? Where is it? Where is it? In my house, on the dat. You need to hear this. What, 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 what you doing with it? You know who, and you know who the Bomb Squad is? They did America's Most Wanted. Duh. 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 Oh, come on. Don't do that. Oh, my God. Take shot, Lee. Take shot, Lee. my back. Shot, <laughs> my back. <laughs> don't do that. Eric Sadler. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
Don't do that. Come on, I did. don't do that. I guess we don't look hip. Oh wow, <laughs> she really did that just then. Oh my god, I got a wow. table mustache. Wow, I got a turntable on my Wow, she interview over. Right? Yeah. No, no, no. She's not, she not observing us. Wow, show. I'm sorry. That was so flagrant. <laughs> they knew, but that... y'all didn't know. Maybe I don't know. I'm just giving out information. <sighs> I'm so offended. I I'm can't. Offended. I cannot believe this. Is over. This. this is crazy. Yes. I'm going to see Chuck D tonight, by the way. And I'm, oh, you are? Yeah. I love Chuck. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, I love Chuck. Um, yeah. So, okay. Damn, you threw me off. I'm sorry. The Daddy, second album. Daddy's little girl. The album we wait, wait, about. But wait, go back to Daddy's wait, little wait, girl. Wait, wait, wait. Daddy's little girl was the name of the album and the single. And the single. Oh, I can tell you how that went down. Yeah. Yeah, tell me. Why, why, so, why, why, why? Right. Because people will go, where did you go? Gold, platinum, neither. Really? It was such a big record. It was. Uh -huh. The single itself got close to gold. I'm also the poster child before SoundScan. Okay. SoundScan literally was about to happen right before my record comes out, right? Uh -huh. So I could have sold anything, right? But I'm told that it was 250, 300, somewhere around there. So, again, prototype. Remember, stay with me, kids. Mm -hmm. Everybody in school. <laughs> so we put out Daddy's Little Girl. Russell wants to put it out. Leo says no. Leo says wait. Russell's like, no, I want to put the record out now. It's a big record. We gotta go. Leo's like, Russell, no, we can't put out the record now because we have to have the album ready. Album's not ready. Russell is gun ho. Russell wanna do what Russell wanna do. That's Russell. He wants to push the record. He gets the promo team on it. He gets everybody on it. He gets the video done. Push the record. It's out in February. It's big. We got pre-orders in the South for the album. We got everything. We still claim samples. We still doing everything else. The album doesn't come until September. Uh -huh. You only have one window to be great when you drop a great record. Uh -huh. You only have one window to catch that vibe, that momentum. They uh -huh. lost it. Uh -huh. West Party Johnson, another one who was running the promotions team back then. I went to the office one day. I'm like, Wes, what's up? Where are we going this week? He would take me everywhere. He would set me up. I'd have been to every single hot city in this country. Mm -hmm. In less than, I don't know how much time, Wes had me on the road. Um, Kevin Lyles, also, whole another story. One of my promo people who was an intern back then, picking me up with a junky-ass car, oh. weighing about 270 pounds, oh. looking like he ate everything that day. Oh, Lord. Picking me up in D.C., Baltimore area. That's where he was the promo man from. Excuse me, excuse me, nigga. Excuse me, excuse my car, but you know, da, 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 da. And I used to run it through all of those promo people. Like, I used to run their corporate cards, everything. Like, mm -hmm. I done had them buy me jewelry, everything. They used to be like, because the word was, give her what she want. Right. And when they got back, they was like, give, not, not gold earrings. Right, right. <laughs> Y'all should have just bought a house all this money y'all spent on her. And I used to just be eating it up. But anyway. Um, I would do a lot of promo runs, and I walked into West's office one day. He said, baby girl. I said, wait, I got something to tell you. I said, what? He said, we lost the record. I said, what do you mean, lost the record? The record's right here. He said, we lost the momentum. Mm -hmm. There is a thing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, like, people think uh -huh. that you just put records out, and it just stays. Even yeah. back then, you could lose somebody that quick. You could lose a base that quick. Because I actually had more people to be rumping with. Right. I was rumping with Latifah. And not technically, but you know what I mean? As mm -hmm. industry-wise. Right. Light. Yo Yo, MC Trouble, God yeah, rest his soul. Like a bunch of artists that were out back then. Right. You know what I mean? And we just kind of like they 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 did it wrong. They handled the project wrong. Yeah. We put it out in September, and guess what it did? Nothing. Right. By the way, I want I want to throw something out there real quick. Um, ninety one was an inc it was a crazy year. Big for year for everybody. We're talking death certificate. Yep. Naughty by nature. Ice Cube. Naughty by nature. Naughty by nature. Mm -hmm. Tribe called Quest Low End. Main Source Breaking Adams, mm -hmm. Ice T's original Gangster, Quick mm -hmm. is the name, Star DJ Day. Quick, Scarface, mm -hmm. De La Soul, Public Enemy big, Drop, yeah. uh, Black Sheep, Tupac, um, Leaders of the New School. Yeah, I mean, Ghetto David. Boys. And it's only one female in all of that. Yo, for real. Well, I think Yo Yo, did Yo Yo drop Yo -Yo that year? MC did. Light did drop. Yeah. Yo Yo dropped that year. Because yeah. me and Yo Yo, when we went on tour, me and Yo Yo were neck and. What we, what we did was. We would split the the, the, the headline. We would okay. split the billing. Okay. Because it was either like we would go out and the promoters would be like, Damn, I didn't realize both of y'all we don't know who to put. Yeah. Like, we didn't care. We were right. like, whatever. I said, Listen, you take the night, I'll take tomorrow night. You take tonight. So we would switch out on who was gonna headline the end, the show. Yeah, right. So that's how dope it was for us back then. That's why I said we had way more like sisterhood back then. Right. But yeah, it was a big year. It was a Damn, huge that's year. I didn't realize that. That's crazy. Yeah, it was a crazy year. Do you ever feel like uh like for example with Yo Yo, Ice Cube kinda 
gave her the a cosign. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I I you had Flav on the first single, but there was no my and this is what I like to say, and there's no 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 take from any of my girls that came out, right? I like to say that I'm probably one of the few that wasn't cut from a rib, if you will. Uh-huh. That I went and I look at the story I told y'all. Yeah. I did all of that motion on mm-hmm. my own, getting it there and doing what I had to do yeah. to get it there. And there was no man on my record. There was no man who thrusted me into the light. But um, there's nothing wrong with it. But I feel like definitely Ice Cube gave her that look. Yeah. And I think that was dope. Like, yeah, Ice Cube was crazy. That was dope. Because yeah. he went on tour. Dope. She went on tour with him. Yeah. He supported her 100%. Like, I think it was dope. Yeah. I think it was dope. Like, even Rage. Rage came through on her own, too. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Afro Puss was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Definitely. So definitely. yeah. On um Daddy's Little Girl, the album, it's a lot of relationship talk. You also tell, you know, you're telling girls what how to act, you know, like in, in a sisterly way, like And it's you know, and it's raunchy at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It it it's, kinda goes right in and out right. of different like almost like personalities almost. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you're having your experiences. Sometimes you're Man, telling girls, yo, is, don't right. do that. You know, what was your thoughts as you were making the album? You lost your rhyme book, so you had to re, you know, in well, some we, ways. When we wrote Daddy's Little Girl, when we came up with that concept, Russell came up with the concept. Mm-hmm. Russell says you should write a song, Daddy's Little Girl. Sid, who did the track, came up with the track. Wrote Daddy's Little Girl. Recorded it. Russell said, no, it's not what I'm looking for. Of course, as an artist, you're a little heartbroken. You're like, well, the shit sounds good to me. Because that's why I'm not putting it out. So I'm back at the drawing board. This is what you have today. The song that everybody's listening to. Because uh-huh. he said it needs to be more conceptual. It needs to be realistic. It needs to be, you uh-huh. know what I mean? Think about yourself in terms. Like, think about, and my father passed when I was young. Uh-huh. But I could still see, I could still I could still very much so be that girl. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Because I still, even when he was he was around, I was daddy's girl. So I could relate 100%. But then also having all these different worlds that I was a part of allowed mm-hmm. me to present that particular story. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And from what I knew, I went, you know, going through high school and having my own friends and them having their issues. So, you know, Daddy's Little Girl was big for me in a sense that um, it allowed me to speak to these young women. I wound up doing tours and going to schools like Ida B. Wells where young girls were pregnant in mm-hmm. Queens and having conversations with them and, and talking them through the things that their families wouldn't have a conversation with them about. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they're pregnant. They're school pregnant. You're already pregnant. Yeah. So now what are we doing? Like, we ain't looking for problems no more. It's a solution. Yeah. And I had a, and I always tell this story, I had a really good conversation with a young lady and her boyfriend slash, her boyfriend at the time, mm-hmm. uh, who, when she was at the school, was her boyfriend. She was like, I don't know, I'm, you know, I don't know what to do with my family. I'm scared to do this, scared to do that, blah, blah, blah. So then her boyfriend sees me at the Palladium three, four years later. Uh-huh. And says, I've always wanted to get at you and have a conversation with you. And I'm like, what happened? He's like, I don't know if you remember going to Ida B. Wells and you went to the school. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, you talked to my fiance. I said, your fiance? He said, yeah. He said, no, we had the baby. Uh-huh. He said, and she's good now. He said, and we're good now. We have uh-huh. a family now. Because uh-huh. what I said to her was, you now have your own family. Yeah. You're starting your own family. And I'm sorry that your family doesn't think that you should be doing this right now. You yeah. know what I mean? And I get it. You're young. And I can see where they're coming from with that. Because I have a child and it's tough. I said, I take him on a road with me sometimes. Like, I take him to the studio. He'd be in the studio with me 3 o'clock in the morning eating Pluck You Hot Wings. If anybody know about Pluck You back then, we, he was killing him at two years old. Yeah. At the studio with me. You know what I mean? Just hanging out with me. So I get it. Mm-hmm. But when her boyfriend came to me, fiance at the time, I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I had did something yeah, at that yeah. point. You know, yeah, and I performed in front of twenty thousand graduating seniors in North Carolina for nothing. Right, I did a lot of just nothing, free as in nothing. There's nothing more rewarding than people appreciating what you did when you thought you was just doing it for you. And people go, "Nah, I feel you too." (laughs) I I can say this as a dad of a daughter. Mm -hmm. That song is always in my head, always, (laughs) always, literally. Yeah. Needless to say, my daughter doesn't get much past me. <laughs> did, did not. Listen, She's grown now. Of course not. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. You def- I can't see her getting much past you. Yeah. Maybe you might let her think she's getting something. Right. Past no. That, she's yeah. busted all. The, she used to get busted all. The time. Right. Look, looking back at your music career, is there anything you would do differently now that you absolutely that you can go back? And, what would that? So be? I would say this, because I didn't understand the business and I kind of managed myself. I didn't have management. 
the other part of why you never had management. Nope. The other part mm. of why he was I a rush management. I had, but that was in the very beginning. Okay. But I wasn't signed to them once I signed the deal because now we're talking conflict of interest, right? Right. So they tried. It was like they would book my shows for me, but they didn't technically manage me. Uh-huh. Okay. I didn't have a contract with them. Uh-huh. But because I was Russell's artist, Def Jam's artist, they made sure that I still went on the road. Right. So that was my connection with Rush Management. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I would have not asked for a release because I asked for it. Russell said, think about it. I thought about it for a little bit. And here's what happened in the interim, though. I did go to, you know, I was supposed to get a deal. I was talking to Shotgun for Flavor Unit. Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, if you you want to go, I got you. I'll get you another deal, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, dope. Because I feel like, shit, if I leave here, I get another home. Because during my second album, we was about to shoot the video. Flex was playing songs off the album and everything. It was already in motion. The second album. Yep. The second album. It was so already it in is motion. Out. No. Oh, this flex. single. You oh, know back in the days, you played okay. singles to the radio right. station. Right. So, he playing it. The record's called Dirt by My Lonely. Um, sample from Naughty by Nature, Tretch. Mm-hmm. That's part of it. Freddie Fox actually oh, wrote on that song. Freddie Fox. Just to put that out there. Okay. So, Freddie Fox actually hard. wrote on that song. Yeah. So, just so y'all know, yes, Nikki D did have somebody write at some point okay. on, a, on a song. Yes, Freddie okay. Fox did that. And to, to be clear, that Nikki D also is a ghostwriter. Okay, okay. And for the right for price, who? for I who? I even Dude, take your shit All right, all right. No, so here I know you go. Gonna do I know, I know. Even like this. The real ghostwriters never tell. No, right. absolutely not. Yeah. Quentin Miller did. Um, I can tell you this, though. I wrote Gangsta Bitch with Apache. Really? Yeah. You wrote that? We wrote that on the bus on the way to Oh, okay, so I got to ask you a question. Oh, I got to Oh, I can see. Oh, okay, okay. I can see you. I can see that. I got it. I got a clickbait question. Wow. Clickbait Question alert. That's one of my favorite records. Yeah. Biggie had a very, very similar song. Me and my bitch. Me and my bitch. Oh, just me and my bitch. Yeah, I absolutely. always was like, he got that from Apache. I always felt that. I ain't gonna lie. It might have come from that. Inspiration wise. It might have come from that. Mm-hmm. It absolutely might have come from that. And I wouldn't be mad if it did. Because I feel like we don't do enough of that. But right, right, we, right. we always call each other out. And that's why it could be it could be clickbait, but it could be what's wrong with it. You know what I mean? At the it's same inspiration. time, it is inspiration. Flattery. I had a conversation with somebody about that real quick because we been back and forth on things. But I had a conversation with somebody about that the other day. I said, "Why do people say things like half of Jay's album is him quoting Biggie's lines? We are talking a whole career here, right? A full blown. You can't get a full blown full blown career. 13, 14, number one albums quoting somebody lyrics all no, the that's a all fact. The time. Not at all. And you got to remember they were friends. They were friends. They were absolutely And he was murdered tragically. Tragically. Right. You know what I mean? So I think it's okay for us sometimes to pull from each other. Yeah. And, you know, there's biting. We know we don't want that. Yeah. um, I wouldn't say it was biting. No. But Uh, definitely inspired by it. Shout out to Apache, by the way. Just rest in peace. He had the Um, best. He had the best heart. He had the best everything. Like, me and him, me and him pinned some pretty... Big records together. Yeah, so, that's what's I, mean, up. I met Tupac and Apache at the same time in Freak Me from Atlanta. Oh, you flexing. <laughs> oh, another flex from you. Oh. Yo, Tupac is so funny. At the funny. same time, Tupac. like, yeah. You got some Tupac stories, I'm sure. Oh, oh I know you, I know you do, because I have. Oh, absolutely. I have yeah. some. I, have, I, I don't have Jada stories, but I have some real Tupac stories. <laughs> you ever do any records with Tupac? That's no. it? That's mm-hmm. somewhere? No, we no, came no. to the studio. I wish, video. I wish. We never. Him and Apache was working on something at one point, but it right. never got finished. And it was hanging out. But right. um, they were at the studio one time, and this is, you know, I'm always the gatekeeper. That's what they say. So we was at, I think, I don't know what club we was at. It might have been that party when me and him was together. We was throwing up the, the, the you know, the finger, mm. and we go back to the studio because Apache has a session. So we're in there for like an hour, and everybody drinking, partying, and I was like, oh, y'all gotta go. The Apache and they getting tossed up. And I know this Tommy Boy, this Tommy Boy label is you gotta get your shit done. I'm in Def Jam. I know how this go. Like, mm-hmm. let's get it right. Like, I'm in that school of we gotta work. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So we all partying or whatever. Tupac was like, wait a minute, you kicking me out too? Me? I said, you gotta go too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But it wasn't no, he wasn't no hate from it. Yeah. Like he was literally my brother. I have fallen asleep with Tupac on tour when we was getting tossed up. Hennessy was our thing. Getting drunk as shit. And him also playing way too many games. Knocking on your door, throwing water on you. All of that shit. Tupac was that person too. Right, right. While at the same time, he gonna break down history and be extremely intellectual with mm-hmm. it. He's also gonna be a kid. Right. You know what I mean? Have a lot of fun. We have woken up to a Hennessy bottle in the middle of the bed together. Like, mm. passed out. Wow. Because we just had so and much fun. And nothing happened. 
Absolutely not. <laughs> Nothing happened. You're That's a crazy. What? Nothing I don't know. Hey, you drunk know how Hennessy do. I mean, it was too drunk to remember. We was no, that ain't definitely not, ended. Oh, yeah. Hey. Definitely not. Now that's my guy. Like we, I love him oh, so man. much. We we were in Florida. We 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 had so much fun together. Like every time me and Tupac was on the scene together, it was fun. It was always love. Yeah. Always. He was the brother that I didn't grow up with, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And every time I saw him, it was always love. Just a really smart, um, fun, charismatic, and talented ass person. Yeah. Very talented. Chain smoking ass motherfucker too. Light one, put the other one out. Light one, light one with the other one. Right, right. I wish he was still here. I ain't I gonna too. lie. He, he's, he's definitely a missing uh, piece of this puzzle. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shoot, talking, uh, you know, we, we could go all day, you know, but... Mm-hmm. With hip hop where it is now, um, we were we were we were as a culture. We're fifty years old now, but when you think about it, then we were what twenty years old, right? Mm-hmm. In the in the nineties, we were the culture was twenty years old, right? And then since then, we've seen Pac Big go. We've seen everything from these type of tragic deaths to Young billionaires. Dolph, like every Young Dolph. Oh that my was a god! Big one. That and was a big between one. Nipsey and Dolph, and I Nipsey, think I lost was, everything. At that point, I think I gave like, up. I was just like, "Yo, where are we? Forget it, then." Yeah. Yeah. What 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 do you think? What do we do proactively? What do you feel we should do? What's the charge? What's the marching steps forward to? To get us on track, like, and and, and that's and you know, again, it's I'm a, not trying. I'm, question. Uh-huh. I'm not trying to be the the guy that says we're not on track. Cause I mean, cause I let mean. make it mm-hmm. make it, the culture's got some some really amazing talent. Yes, really, truly, and I mean that. I mean, we had Nick Grant in here last week. Okay, I mean, even Pac Man Jones, okay. like he ain't, yeah. he ain't bad. He you know, he, right? Um, what 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 would you say you would like to see? I would like to see the game get open back up, the industry open back up for diversity. Okay. I think we are absolutely making the men look like the biggest street heads you could possibly see. Everything mm-hmm. is money, drugs, and chicks. Mm-hmm. Um, where's the guy? Like, where, what happened to Chance? What happened to Lupe? Mm-hmm. What happened to, you know, and, and Carmen, who's a vet, but mm-hmm. what happened to that energy? And we don't hear enough of the Chuck D's and all that stuff because these things are still real in our world. Uh-huh. And I think we've created some, well, th- what has been created is this fake world that you could just be this. Uh-huh. And nobody actually shows the work or imaging or anything that goes into all this yeah. stuff. And they think that you just wake up and you become this. And it's not that simple. Yeah. And for the women, I just absolutely want some diversity for them. I want I want us to have more women involved where, you know, like this is Muslim sister. I think her name is Milan. Yes, I she follow her. Is a... Uh, Amazing. Amazing. But and, I want to hear them records. Oh, and here's the thing. So, also, the, the sisters or the female rappers that we don't hear enough of, you still have to make big songs. Right. You still have to make a big record. You can't right. just be the girl that, yeah, but she dope. She got bars. Right. A lot of us do. Yeah. So did Cannabis. Yeah. yeah. So does Papoose. Yeah. Where's the big record? Big record. You know what I mean? So we would love, so so I think we need to like get into a space where we are now making music again instead of just making songs. Right. And I think we if we make music, it goes back to soul music, which okay. I like to. That's why when you hear Run DMC record or Houdini record or KRS One record, you feel like you there again because this is soul mm-hmm. music. This right. is really the music that was connecting with us back then. Yeah. I feel like we need to make more music that is connecting with us as humans mm-hmm. and not just the drug dealer or the baby daddy, the dude with the bad bitch, the woman with the fat ass. Like mm-hmm. we need more things that connect to us as people in general. And I think we could kind of like get a little bit on track, but we only go on one way if we only doing one thing. Like we have to open up our minds again. Yeah. You know what I mean? We have to and then we have to also nurture our communities. Yeah. We can't just assume that we get rich and we leave it like that. Because you know what happens? Mm-hmm. You keep breeding what you're talking about, right? And then you can't go back to the community because yeah. you have not only not sold them crack, but you sold them a lie. Yeah. You sold them this dream that you don't even live. Right. All y'all kids are in private school. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, all y'all look, kids don't get me started on life. that. Oh, all yeah. your kids have nannies and they don't mm-hmm. pick up for oh, nothing man. around the house. Listen, all your kids that's a are fact. living their At best the life. Same time, but selling. your man who listening to you. Don't even care about his kid because you know why? He outside acting like you. Right. That's a fact. That's he a outside fact. acting like you. That's so you got to present something. And I'll say this to one artist who I think I'm going to give all this credit to. I love Offset. 
Okay. Yeah. I think Offset is an amazing artist. I think he's an amazing person. Mm-hmm. I think he's gone through a lot. Now, mm-hmm. like everybody else, yep, he talked that. Mm-hmm. Talked that talk. He talked that same my bitch thing, my this, that. But what I like about Set It Off, and I don't know if y'all have heard it. Have you heard Set It Off? No. It is a really good album. Okay. It's okay. solid to me. Okay. When I, to, when I think about albums, I think about who you are on the album. I think about, did you care about production? I think about, do you have songs or are you just talking shit? Mm-hmm. I think about, is it cohesive? Does mm-hmm. it all make sense? Mm-hmm. And I think about the, the, the graphics, the artistry, the imaging. Mm-hmm. And he's spending a lot of time on his graphics right now. I don't know yeah. if anybody's paying attention. But his videos are crazy. Mm-hmm. His artwork is crazy. His presentation for everything is crazy. Even if you look at his interview with, um, I don't want to, uh, but anyway, Evo, Apple Music, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you look at that interview, it's a really good interview. And he says everything that I've been saying. I was watching it with my son the other day. Mm-hmm. And I and Offset says, people just don't want to see you picking up the mic, walking back and forth mm-hmm. on the stage no more. Yeah, people you know just don't want to. I was telling my son that. I've been telling this forever. And I was like, somebody's got to get creative. I gave this idea to my son. And Offset literally said this. I told this to my son three years ago, four years right. ago. And Offset literally said it. Yeah, I'm going to just do videos for everything. And then make like a short story, like a short movie. And I'm looking at my son like this. Mm. You told him. Don't get, again, prototypes, history. Don't get it twisted because somebody's not sitting in a Bentley right. that they don't know. And people's mistakes are your wins. Right. You have to know that. Mm-hmm. So, um... You you got you, will you come back? <laughs> yes, I will. Okay, okay. Yo, I just want to give you your props. Thank right? Flowers. You was you was hot back in the Girl, day. Thank I ain't got you, you still hot. Still hot. But back in the day, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> oh, yeah, she's so dope. You had the 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 the, the um, what do you call it? Overalls. Yep. One half was yep. down. I was like, yo. Yeah. And I had the, the yeah, and I had yeah. the, the baby boobs. Right, 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 right. <laughs> and the baby I, boobs would be. I know what you're right. saying. I already know what it is. I get a lot of letters from jail. <laughs> right, 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 right. All right, all right. I had to get that out. But um, top five dead or alive from your perspective. Top five dead or alive. Top five. Top five. Harris one. Okay. Which makes sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, folks, he's still doing it now. Yes, he is. Yes. And Harris one is definitely one of my top five dead or alive. Um, Jay Z. Jay Z. Were you there? Were you still around Def Jam? At, I know you. During the deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. I watched everything happen. Yeah. Yeah, because I actually started working there. I, I remember that. Back. I yeah. remember that. I actually started working at Def Jam. Yeah. Um, so Jay, Jay-Z, Karis won. It was kind of sort of a pack mix. I remember what he was saying. Like, Jay-Z, Karis won. Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss. Okay. Um, Shout out to Jay-Z. That's three. See, I'd be tossed up. Like, I gotta throw Red Man in there. And because I think he is damn. So that'd be top ten. Top five. See, you had so much authority before. I did. Like, yeah, I, I, did. I, did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. Because so I'm easy. tossed up. So I'm gonna go with um Nas. Nas. Okay. So I I wanna get I wanna get I gotta get your the stretches both. Can, can you can you give us Top five female rappers. Absolutely. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Um, top five female ice, rappers. Ice. <laughs> ah. <laughs> she might become that. Cause I'm telling she, you, she only she got, got one it. album. She got. She even got that. She got an EP. So she EP. she bodied it. Uh, Delhi, she bodied it. So um, let's see. My top five female rappers. It's going to be definitely without a question, um, Queen Latifah. Uh-huh. It's going to be, and only though she has one album, it's going to be Lady of Rage, because she means she, I'm talking my era, right? Uh-huh. Dead or Alive. And it's also going to be um, Nicki Minaj. Now, somebody who didn't make it as big as they should have, Lady Luck. Oh, Lady Luck. Yeah, she was one damn queen. queen. She was, yeah. but Lady Luck. Mm-hmm. Damn, she was a, yeah. she was, she was a beast. Yeah. Beast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out to her. Yeah. Shout out to Luck. I Lady, Lady Luck. Luck. And wow. one of my favorites from another region who I love to death, who I seen still work from 1991 to 2023, 
who is the beast at her hustle game when it comes to the music industry, when it comes to her region, is Mia X. Mia X. Oh, mm-hmm. Mama Mia. Mama Mia. Mama 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 Mia. Mama I love I love Mia, Mia X. Mia X. Because uh, what people don't know, and when we did that Queens of Hip Hop tour, damn, I forgot Eve. There's a bunch of them. Eve is definitely there, too. Right. When she did, when we did that Queens of Hip Hop tour, and we did interviews, this is all, this is out there, so I ain't got to hide it. It ain't nothing I'm telling you, telling no secrets. But it was her money that funded that label. Really? Oh. Wow. Talk to Mia. Mia, shout out to her. She money came from, from somewhere. Oh, oh absolutely. She, listen. Uh, she could cook, yeah. but yeah. So those are those 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 would be definitely my top five, and a lot of it is a little bit biased at the same time. But I mean, at the same time, these girls work. Yeah, they got they get that work. Yeah, th- just just for the record, Rod Digger got to throw her up. Rod Digger, you know, I get I, I just want to give you a lot of credit, you know, just for actually being a stand up person in hip hop. It's kind of hard to tell the truth, or at least how you see the truth, speaking your truth. Um, in this social media era, Agreed. yeah, Agreed. and um, see, I don't have a bag for nobody to cancel. Right, nah, that's, <laughs> uh, I hear you. And even if I did, I, I would still do. I've always been that person, and kind of feel like people just today, people like the truth to be a lie and a lie to be the truth. Uh-huh. You know, that's the thing today. Yeah. So. Right. Before you get into that, I gotta do this because I like teachable moments. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give? And I'm gonna target female. What advice would you give a young female that's inspiring to be a rapper, but is influenced by what we see, but that's not her. And she's feel pressured to go, okay, I got to do this because that's the only way they're going to listen to me. What advice would you give her? I would say to the young lady to look at uh, your life and look at what matters to you and know that there are many a young women like you who would love to hear who you really are mm-hmm. as opposed to coming out and already kind of like copycat and what you already see Mm -hmm. because it doesn't really loan anything to you and the one thing that happens in this industry that people don't really um that was a doritos the one thing that happens in this industry that people don't really take note to is that the copycat thing only lasts but for so long and the people who have longevity are people like look at j cole Mm -hmm. you know what i mean look at people like Kendrick Lamar, who now drops, what, every two years, maybe, if he he feels like it? Look at those artists who, to me, are much different than everything else we used to have. It's because this is who they are, and this is who, it's all they can be. So I would say to the young lady, be who you are, Mm -hmm. and not be who you think you should be. Because the powers that be, they're going to try to push whatever they can Mm -hmm. your way, but you're going to have to then at some point be like, nah, that's not really what I want to do. Like, you have to have some stands about who you are. If you don't, then you're just going to fall through the cracks like everybody else and you'll be that one girl that we knew about. Yeah. That we saw, what we're, that maybe we won't know about you. Right. Okay. But just be solid. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be, be and be genuine. Be original. Yeah. For sure. There's a lot of things you could be, but the one thing a lot of people can't be is you. So if you be yourself, that's going to shine like a lot more. See, they need to hire you for artist development, especially for they females. Do. Get at me. Get at her. I'm my Atlantic. manager, too. I see y'all sinking in the Atlantic. In the Atlantic. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Say it again. I said Atlantic. Get it's sinking. I'm right? sinking Atlantic. In the Atlantic. In the Atlantic. <laughs> what are you working on nowadays? Uh, I'm working on my Nikki D show podcast. I'm working on this record called Crown Shift. So Crown Shift. Mm. You feel me? Um, I'm working on my son's project, which I've been working on for a minute. Um, if he would just sit still and let me help him, we'll actually be able to get it off the ground. What's his artist name? So we can... His name is Chi Chi. Yeah, so yeah, and like he's it. on Instagram as Chi Chi Guap Guy, so you can follow him. Okay. Um, but I'm working on him and. Once he sits still on that, he, he he's another one who doesn't think that you know you know because you're not sitting, you're not picking him up in the Bentley and you're not mm-hmm. you, know, you know you're my son. He he's knows. judging it by material. I was say, wasn't he with you on the bar so. show? My yeah. son been in my son been an artist since he could talk. Yeah. Right. So he's been doing this for a long time. He even when ABC was out, remember the group ABC? Yeah. Yeah. He they came out my, the year you came out, didn't he told they? My, yeah. He told my friend who was my role manager at the time. My son was like seven, maybe six. Like he was young. Yeah. He was like, they didn't come out the year I came out. They came out like I think a little bit later. Okay, okay. But he told my um, he told my manager, he was like, if they can get a publishing deal, I know I could get one. You young talking publishing deals, but today you falling victim. Falling victim to your to your to your to your environment. So right. you know it's no fault of his, but at the same time, I'm gonna I'm gonna blame you for not standing up and stepping out too, right? Uh-huh. And being different. So absolutely, but um. 
I'm working on him. I'm working on, um, I, like I said, my own record. And that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Okay. And, you know, I'll, I'll put some other things out there. But hold I just, up, oh, and hold I, up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Just real quick. First album. Right. 91. And who was that? Oh, Playground. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. See, we do this but up you here. Know what? <laughs> but they had another album out after that. Yeah, right? well, they had another album. Yeah, of course. So, no, I was... What 93. I'm saying is, okay. 91, what 93. Was, he was young. My son was oh, young. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was trying to, like... I was just trying to connect times. your dots. Oh. Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, you... me and ABC came out at the same time. <laughs> right. Okay. No. <laughs> I was dating a girl named Aisha when that came out. Aisha. Oh, no. Did you play that song for her? Aisha. Aisha. Did I? Oh, by the way, on the same <laughs> note... The same girlfriend, by the way. You had painted on jeans in mm-hmm. Letting Off Steam. Sure I, 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 well, I'm a little bit of an artist. I painted her jeans. It was like some crazy Dominic comic book stuff that I, you know, my style. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shout out, to I- <laughs> Shout out to Aisha. Shout out to Aisha. Shout out to Aisha. Shout out to Aisha. She's out there. Yeah. Shout out to her. But- I know we wrapping this all up, and I just have to because one I've known you for quite some time, yeah. just being on the scene, and it's funny how I kind of feel like I get relationships more so than people I just know, and I feel like I've known you long enough to say that we have a, at least a relationship in the industry where we have a completely respectable absolutely rela- relationship. Um, absolutely, we can always have conversations even when the cameras are on and not mm-hmm. on. Yeah, and I so want allhiphop.com. To be our go-to place okay. when it comes to media. Okay. Because you deserve it. Thank you. You've been doing it for so long, Chuck, that there's absolutely no way you should not be up there. And I get it. You're fighting against all the gossipy things, all of the stuff that's hot and trending. Uh-huh. But I also feel like we just need a source because we don't have a source anymore. Right. Not as in the magazine, but at mm-hmm. a resource, I know. I'll know. i say, right? Mm-hmm. That we can go to and that we could say, oh, you know what? Who album came out? Oh, you know what? What happened? They're in this movie. This da 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 we come to allhiphop.com because anything hip-hop, we get it from you. Okay. So I just want to tell you that I appreciate you for being around all this time and hanging in there. And I hope to see you be one of the bigger um, we media outlets. We working. Because you we, deserve it. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to hire you as a consultant. There you go. <laughs> He's hired. Bow. Right. You heard. No, nah, yeah. No, nah, nah, <laughs> we, we working. It's 25 years, all hip-hop. 25 and, years. Um, 25 years. And what people don't understand, really, and I'll just say this, is that they don't, you would you probably understand, but most people don't understand what twenty five years or more thirty, what the ups the downs mm-hmm. the changes in technology culture music mm-hmm. people attitudes change everything everything changes in right. twenty five years, so you have to learn to adapt, shift, pivot, adjust, adjust. Yes. And if you don't, it's over. Yes, absolutely. You, and that's why maybe people who weren't flexible like you, you could be an oak tree. But right. that wind hits an oak tree the right way, it's going down. Right. Whereby a, ba- a piece of bamboo, it'll it'll move a little bit. Not It won't break. Right. Good analogy. You know what I'm saying? That is a good analogy. And Thanks. you do, and yeah, you're right. You you do have to adjust. And when you don't adjust, you're out of here. You're out a of lot here. of times. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we are. There it is. Somebody called us the Titanic one time, and I won't say who, but it was somebody, wow. somebody very close to me, who got mad at me. Wow. And, 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 and the Titanic. And, oh yeah, because all hip hop was it. I mean, you know, I th- I think we're still it. Yeah. There's a bunch of other people too. Yeah. But is. um. But I think you, I think you absolutely could come through and and yeah. just scoop up your market share again and uh-huh. be that be that be that person be that uh, media. Might just have to start calling people out. Let's do it now. Let's go. Let's speak on it. Let's speak on it right well, now. You know what? Who we calling out? No, I'm kidding, but I'm I not. Know, but you, I was gonna say, you know what people want though? They do want people to be raw. They want the honest truth. And I think sometimes our integrity stops yeah. us from. Because trust me, I didn't expect any of that from my opinion on ice cream. Mm-hmm. I always talk shit. Yeah. You right. feel me? Like that's just what mm-hmm. I do. I say things, and people know me for being that person. So I didn't expect. Um, this big old hip hop DX to pick it up and then say Nikki D takes aim at you like yeah come on I ain't take no aim Nikki D anymore. points her gun at you know what I mean like, <laughs> her come puts, on puts but what it ice spice was, in the scope let me tell you what's crazy I got two thousand more followers from that what wow two in less than a day two thousand more yeah. who is she and then I got all of the shorties like I told you be coming at me I'll be like I'm still your auntie 
Right. I'll put your ass in bed later. Stop playing with me. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it, it it's a thing. Yeah, it's a when thing. people like to have that uh, that thing yeah, they that happens. Do. But it was my truth. I didn't come at her and say, Yeah, you're the worst thing that ever happened. I just said, This is dead wrong. Mm-hmm. And those are people who don't agree with it, are people who agree with it. Mm-hmm. But that was something from the general consensus that everybody wanted to say. They said it. A lot they of people definitely said, said it. it. Yeah. A lot of people that said it. Everybody wanted to say it. And she's been it. around for a minute and that was that was like she jumped the shark or crossed, oh, absolutely. crossed over to another level. Yeah, I was still looking for the t-shirt and the tank tops. So I was like, I was cool with that. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Because I was like, oh, good. Right around the way. Here yeah. we go. We love it. That's what we need. Yeah. And then she said, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to jump over there with the sharks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, I thank appreciate you. you. And you are one of my favorite people for oh, real. Oh, thank you. Definitely. Thank Absolutely. you. Me and Chuck will be somewhere in the side room eating some chicken wings or whatever. And Doritos, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Pluck you. Enjoying life. Yeah. <laughs>